used to us. I'll be honest with you, you're probably my favorite drummer around this area. Cool. Can, can we get that on tape? <laughs> A lot of people think, well, Black Label Society, you guys yeah, are right. kind of ripping off. Yeah. They don't realize that you guys were way before right. that. And, and we might have been the inspiration for their name. Tell, tell, tell that story. Okay. you got to tell that story. Tim is definitely a very organic uh, <laughs> you know, drummer, just like, you know, it just... Totally. And the one of the, the things that I loved about you guys and playing with you guys is we could play together. We, and we didn't have to rehearse much. And if we wanted to change something on at, at a gig with a bar full of people, we could do it and pull it off. Right. A, a perfect example of that was when we would do the Toadie song. Yes. <laughs> and we ended it right. and we just slowed it. Down. That was his idea, and we we, we just wrote, went along nobody for the knew ride. What I, nobody knew what I was doing at the time, yeah. you know, and it, it was one of those things where I'm going, God, I hope these guys get it, because this would be so cool, you know. <laughs> we're not talking and, yeah, about it, yeah, we're just right. going to do it. Yeah, and we, did, and we just did it, and it was just one of those bands where the four guys, what we, we would listen, we would bounce off of one another, and we would understand if something was going on, or if we needed to adjust, and it just, it just happened. It, yeah. it, it, it was like you know, magic. I mean, you know, it just, it, it just was, you know, it was one of those things where I, I just, I, 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 I love doing it and it's going to be a part of my life that I'll never, ever forget. Sure. You know? yeah. It's, it's, it's that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's a thousand things I could talk about, yeah. you know, about this band. You know? We're going to, we're going to do it. We're yeah, get as right, much as yeah. We can. Oh yeah. So just let everybody know, obviously if you, um, don't know black labels here with us today, uh, Craig Schmidt, um, Tim Hummelcheck. Yes. Uh, Brad was going to be here, but he had something that popped up. Um, but, you know, just like we said, with all these other bands, there'll be a number two, number three, number four, or whatever, whatever it's going to be. So we'll definitely get um, all y'all back together at yeah. some point. But once, you know, first off, I want to thank you guys so much for coming. I've already told you when you walked in the door, I was very hesitant to give you guys a call. I didn't want to bug you. But uh, it okay. finally got to the point where I'm like, you know what? All they can do is tell me to kiss their ass. So yeah. whatever. So we <laughs> yeah. did it. That was so, great. Yeah. After, yeah. after you know, uh, you know, hearing about the sh uh, podcast and then seeing Dave's thing, you know, yeah. it's like, man, this is great. You know, this is really cool. Really is, and I, it, it, I, it is the elephant in the room. You know, and I, I get it. You know, it's one of those things too, where uh, you know, I really felt like something like this would be a really, really good way to start healing yeah. a yes. little bit, at least you know, for me. Sure. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's, it's one of those things. I, I, you know, I'm still. I'm still dealing with it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I'll ever get over it, but you know, it's one of those things where time, you know, it'll it'll heal a little bit, yeah. you know. Well, we'll get into that a little bit yeah. <laughs> later. Yeah, um, sure. I, I kind of just want to, you know, not exactly chronological, but I want to get, I guess, from the start. Maybe some of your interests at the very beginning. I mean, you know, everybody wants to be a drummer, right? That's what of, I course think. Do. <laughs> right. so, of course so they do. Of course they do. you? Did you start out uh, yes. playing guitar, or was uh, it? no? Started out with drums. Okay, great. <laughs> I knew uh, my my older brother and sister were uh, they were in their school band, and they had a little snare drum they they brought home and practiced on. And so I just I just for whatever reason was just locked into those rhythms and stuff. And so I went around tapping on every little thing in the house. Did the whole getting in the pantry, sitting in the floor of the pantry. And I'm like, I'm like between the ages of four and nine here. I was actually seven when, when they started playing drums. So that's when I, um, saw them and get in the pantry with the, all the, the big, you know, vegetable and fruit, big cans and back of the spoons, you know, make it, made it. They had different tones to yeah. them. Oh, yeah. You yeah. got yeah. a big one. They, they oh, would yeah. be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. my parents would be like, where's Craig? Wait, listen. <laughs> okay and then yeah. go pull open the door and there i am like what Whoa, what's going on you know uh so yeah started out with drums uh got into school drumming it in like sixth grade at school uh actually stayed as a drummer through my junior year in high school uh but but that sixth grade year both my friend paul ketter and i uh were in the band together playing drums 
And that right that fall was when MTV hit. Mm. Paul was like, so, you know, uh, so that Christmas. We got to make a video now. <laughs> right. No, Paul was like that Christmas. He's like, dude, my parents are giving me a drum set. I said, cool, I'll. I'll ask for a guitar then, you know, because, you know, we were both drummers, you oh, know, okay. but uh, I was like, well, I, we got to play. We got to do this, this MTV thing. So, uh, yeah, I, I got a guitar and it's, you know, that was the rest well, of history. If, if your passion was drums, the only reason I'm going to bring this up is because I've tried to play guitar before and I was just like, no, I'm just, I will never, ever, ever get this. So I'm going to go back to just beating the heck out of stuff. Right. So when did it become a passion? Because uh, obviously you're very, very good. And Thank you. Um, we're going to put some links and stuff in the description, uh, hopefully, you know, to show you guys this talent. Um, so how did you get that good? Well, you know, and it, it took a long time, trust me. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> uh, the, like the first year of my guitar playing, it kind of just kind of sat and collected dust because I didn't know anything and I wasn't taking lessons. Uh, basically what, it, what the catalyst was hearing Eddie Van Halen's eruption. Mm -hmm was was like okay i know what i now have to do yeah. you know i mean that just yep. floored me more yep. than anything else and it was just like okay this is that's that's my destiny right there uh but it was you know many years of struggle and then i think my cousin in north carolina he played guitar a little bit with a band up there and it was like he showed me my first power chord mm -hmm. and that was it that yeah. opened all the doors sure. i was able to play jesse's girl and crimson clover and all those songs that were hot at the Smoke time on the water you oh know? yeah absolutely and so and so <laughs> once once you know once the power chord came into my life i was like oh this is great i yeah. can move this everywhere i can do what i want to do and and pick up songs you know so uh yeah, i remember when i first started taking lessons from a guy steve weber uh, who teaches at the fret shop uh but then he taught at robin's music center when it was still around. Uh, the first thing he said, what do, what, what do you want to learn how to play? You know, I can either teach you, Barry had a little lamb and how to read music and stuff like that, or I can teach you stuff, you know, like you bring in to me. And I, first thing I brought into was Van Halen. He's like, well, maybe we should <laughs> slow down just a little bit. We'll work our way up to that. Right. You know, so, uh, so he was really cool. And, you know, I got to learn a bunch of stuff, but, you know, the Van Halen didn't come in until much later, but, uh, you know, it just, I just stuck with it. It was just one of those things that I just kept doing and kept doing, uh, and, and it just finally clicked, you know, but I think having that drummer, you know, that foundation, yeah. yeah, uh, really helped because, you know, the rhythm parts, you know, rhythm wise was nothing, you know, it was yeah. just a matter of, you know, building my ear, training my ear to, to pick out songs and pick out parts and be able to play them I and rewind and play, rewind and play kind of thing. You watch uh, Jeff Goebel's podcast, Final Residence TV? Uh, no, I haven't seen it. Man, he's got a whole series. I mean, he's probably got 80, 90 videos and it's all going back to whole, all Van Halen, basically going back to the roadie. I mean, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it, there's a lot there um, that you'd have to go through. Yeah, but, he's, uh, he's definitely a, an Eddie guy. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> With his very expensive guitar collection of Eddie Van Halen, you know. Yep, yep. So, uh, Tim, how did you get started? I mean, was you an original drummer, I imagine? Yes, yeah. Okay. I, 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 I know was. you dabble, and we'll get into that a little bit. Yeah, but. I I, I was. I uh, You know, naturally, I, I got hooked on it when i saw the muppet show when i was a kid oh, with the man, battle yeah. between animal and yeah. buddy rich buddy and that was my that was my that was my exposure to you know a drummer that made drums cool you know they weren't just like back in the back doing this thing buddy would make them something sure. and give them a voice you know and i was like that's what i want to do i'm doing that you know and i was six you know and uh i you know, went up through the educational levels and, you know, through all the middle school and high school drum line and uh, got my first slot in uh, the Suncoast Sound Drum and Bugle Corps when I was 14. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem was, is I had to have $780 to go on tour with them uh, and during the summer and I couldn't come up with it. And I, I was also didn't make the age limit and mm. you had to have a you were I, I think you had to be 18 uh because there was just the drum and bugle core back in 85 was it, it it was awesome but it was uh it was it was an orgy is okay. what is what it was right. you, you know <laughs> okay. what i mean so <laughs> it's like you had to be legal to go and i i, I didn't know i just wanted to play drums right. you, you know, know what i mean yeah, right. there to play not yeah. to, you and know. It, i mean this is a military style strict kind of thing yeah. but it, it was it was 
you know, it, it was one of those things I, I wanted to try to accomplish. And then it turns out the guy came back and my, uh, I was cut and they wanted me to play front ensemble and a bunch of timpanis and, you know, wind chimes. I'm not going to do that. I'm yeah. like, if I'm not marching, I ain't playing. Yeah. So I gave that up and, uh, you know, I got into my first band. Um, it was called Asylum, you know, in, in, in Florida. And uh, we would we would go out and we'd play. And it was a bunch of guys that were, uh, you know, they, they were in their mid-20s, you know. And I was, you know, a kid. Yeah. And we'd have to go into the bars, you know. And back then, it wasn't a big deal, you know. If you were in the band, oh, yeah, like, he's in the band, you know. Yep. And then, you know, it's... You know, we're playing and tequila sunrises and shit. Now, you know, I, and I've got, I got to, I got to be in marine biology the next morning, you know, and I'm, I'm playing all night long. And, and it came along where I was like, this is, I, I really, I just, I love this. Why, why do I need to learn algebra two when I know this is what I want to do? Mm. And finally, you know, my senior year of school, I, I had, <laughs> it was, it's, it's kind of funny because I had, I had six music classes and algebra two and yeah, yeah. and i got I, I got i got six a's and a d right <laughs> and i graduated Just enough to graduate you know, right. yeah right yeah, oh, yeah. exactly yeah. yeah that's where it started you know and then i got you know i got out and uh played uh you know played and played in a couple things that caught a little bit of fire down in the florida area ybor city in tampa and down down in that circuit down there we hooked up with a band called stranger um and they had a guitar player named Ronnie Garvin, who is wound up being really one of my heroes. He was he was just a great guy, you know, and a great, fantastic guitar player. Played a nice Fender Strat relic and just could just rip. And uh, they were they were the big thing down in our area. They did they, their their gimmick was Florida rock, mm -hmm. you know, Okeechobee whiskey and Swamp Woman and, yeah. and stuff like. And I mean, they would pack the place. I mean, everywhere they went, it wasn't a thousand seat place, but it was three hundred people, yeah. and it was wall to wall every time they played. And we got you know we we'd be the opening band, and uh, you know we we'd play forty five minutes. We're in, we're out, you know, and. Um, we got to know everybody and, uh, you know, went through the channels and just cutting teeth as a kid like that. And then, uh, you know, I... Uh, so, you, you did you grow up in Florida or did you just go to school down there? Born and raised. I'm a Florida native. Okay. I was born in uh, Morton Plant Hospital in Clearwater, Florida. It's two blocks from Hulk Hogan's house that they shot his... <laughs> yeah, shot the, shot the whole Hogan family... That whole... Ho the series? Hogan family oh, problems, God. or whatever the hell is going on. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, right oh, there. Nose best, or whatever. So, is your yeah. wife from there? Do you mind if I mention her name? No, please, Angela. So, yeah, no, yeah, Angela. Yeah, no, she, her and I have been together since we were, I, I met her when I was 13 years old in eighth grade in Largo High School, right there, at the same town. So, she came from Savannah, Georgia. She was a military brat, and uh, we met in Largo High School, and uh, we were there ever since, and we've been mm -hmm. together ever since, pretty much. You know, off and on in high school, she had her, you know, bullshit guys she liked and stuff. And I, you know, and then we wound up together. <laughs> well, no, we wound up together at, you know, at, you know, our senior year and you know, the whole thing. But well, it, the reason I'm laughing is because, you know, my, me and my wife has been together that long too. I, I've actually known her since I was about five years old. It's really funny. Wow. You but what, what I'm idea. laughing about is because you said, oh, no, that bullshit guy she liked. Yeah, right. You're still <laughs> angry. <laughs> no, I'm, 30 still, years later. I, I'm still not over it. The guy's right. named Doug Davenport, oh, I get it. man, and he pisses me off. You know? I get it, man. He was, in the, he was in asylum. <laughs> he was the lead singer. In the, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, right. So anyway, yeah. I'm not going to go into that. You know? <laughs> but anyway, so it was one of those things. She could have the singer, she could have the drummer. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, come on, you know. Anyway, anyway, little yes. sidetrack there. Yeah, right. No, but we it was yeah we we've been together a while. And one thing that I did notice uh, about the black label thing, speaking of that, is when I met Angela and I've been we've been together so long. One thing I noticed about about black label is when I got into the band, Brad and Candy just got together, got married. Craig had Leslie, Dave had Susie, I had Angela, and. All the way through the entire duration of the band, it was it, so we, we, we stayed married. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We stayed yeah. married. The the entire band stayed married. <laughs> no. Now that's a quiz for anybody out there. <laughs> Name me a rock band that every band member stayed married sure. through the entire duration of the band. So what year was what, what year did Black Label first? What 
what well, was the concept of it? Who came up with it? Who okay. was the original members? It, That's uh, this guy. Um, back in 94, uh, the lead singer Chris Hamer and I were in a band called Mums the Word <laughs> uh, with Wes Wilkes on bass and Ricky Levins, a friend of ours, on drums. And uh, Hamer had been hanging out with a guy, Chris Eldridge, who was from a band, Catatonic. And I think Catatonic was kind of on its end, you know, its last days. And so they were hanging out together, starting to kind of jam together, a little bit write together. And he was like, hey, man, how about you and Craig? Because he knew we were in a band. He's like, how about you and, you and Craig come over and we'll start this new band? You know, we didn't have a name yet or anything. Uh, and we're like, yeah, sure, cool. You know, so uh, basically, mum's the word, kind of fizzled. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I came in with with Hamer and Eldridge and uh, and... We didn't have the name yet, but we we started with uh, Tony Sledy on drums. He was from a band called Madhouse. Um, we were going to bring in his bass player, but Tony he, Stiletti. Stiletti, yeah. You're kidding. Yes, he was our first first drummer. I love for, that guy for, for all of like three <laughs> I, or four months. I haven't seen him for. I'm sorry, I haven't seen him for a while. I think the last time we saw him was probably when we played that Night Moves benefit. Sorry, I, for I don't fish. mean to describe, but. Yeah, uh, Tony? No, Tony. No Tony kidding. Was, yes, the left, I had no he was idea. a left hand. He was a lefty. So, right, right. That, yeah. You, right. you said we'd, we'd all learn something. With yeah, this, yeah right? so here I, we go. I am. He yeah. had, I, the, he had the all, biggest yeah. drum kit I, I think I've ever seen. These <laughs> these two double kit cannons, like just huge. He had had a custom built at Quarter Drum Shop here in town. Uh, you know, but for the biggest kit he had, he was the lightest player. Just <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> That's so funny, yeah. man. Because, I mean, it was such a monster kit. You would expect somebody behind it going, you know, and he was like, tut, 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 tut. <laughs> I was like, dude, just hit those things a little bit louder. But no, he was a good drummer. But uh, but um, so we had Tony, and then um, our first bass player was Keith Posey. Uh, a, friend, um, a friend of ours recommended him. Uh, they had gone to UA, UNA together. Um, so that's that started in 90, fall of 94 is when we, we originally started. I came up with like, 90 plus names to try to name the band and everybody was like eh, no you know no one could land on a name we're at practice one night uh we're all outside you know on a break or whatever uh drinking and doing whatever we do and uh hamer had a uh like a fifth of jack or whatever that uh, he had just polished off and and dropped to the ground and and it just labeled face up and we all just kind of stood there and looked at it and we're like and he said chris hamer said Black Label. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, that's it. That's the name. That's cool. We're not going. That's we're really not, cool. We're not yeah. going back on anything. That's the name. <laughs> that's how it happened. So, uh, you know, and different other people will try to claim that they said it, but it was Chris Hamers who said it, and I was there. Um, well, the so, good, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> the, good, the, the thing about that name, which is interesting, because a lot of people who don't know you from that far back, a lot of people think... Well, Black Label Society, you guys yeah, are right. kind of ripping off. Yeah. Right. They don't realize that you guys were way before right. that. Yeah. And and we might have been the inspiration for their yeah, name. Tell, tell that story. Okay. You got to tell that story. I, I know this story. This is a summer, great story. Summer Nam of 97. Yes. We're up in Nashville. <laughs> uh, I'm with my wife, and we're going around and, and doing stuff. And we see uh, Zach Wilde's getting ready to do a, a booth signing at the Gibson booth. Um, and we're like, oh, cool. Let's, let's get, get a couple beers and get in line. So we're, we're sitting in line. We're waiting. Da da da. Uh, and this is this is post like Pride and Glory, right? He's like kind of yes. in, oh, in, yeah. in between. He's doing the Aussie right. thing. Pride, but, Pride and Glory right. technically was coming out in '94 or right. before. So right. that was right when Black Label was forming. Pride so he was glory, still Pride and me, Glory. By that way, but they were awesome. But anyway, great band. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be the. Uh, my thumbnail that we have for yours, Zach Wild was a thief. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I know. I'm just kidding. No, but I mean, just, well, here's what just happened. Just wait. Yeah. Here's what happened. So, so I, I, my wife, you know, I'm, uh, I've got my beer. She, she walks up to, to get an autograph and take picture. I'm, I'm taking the picture. Okay. So then I hand her the camera. She hands me her beer. So I walk up with like two beers in one hand. And, uh, the first thing Zach says to me, and this, you might have to beep this out. I don't know. It's, no, we don't beep. Oh, okay, cool. He says, uh, hey, the two-fisted two -fisted motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, all right, cool. You know, I'll take that. I'll take anything, you know, at this point, because he's Zach Wild, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, so he's sitting there, you know, signing, and we're just kind of shooting the shit a little bit. And I said, man, dude, I got to tell you, the Pride and Glory album was the shit. And he said, dude, wait till you hear the new shit that's coming out. It's going to blow your mind. I said, cool, a new Pride and Glory. What's it called? 
uh, it's not Pride and Glory, but we don't have a band name yet. I said, oh, cool. So are you in a band? I said, you know, long hair, obviously. I said, yeah, I'm in a band, Black Label from Huntsville, Alabama. Okay, cool, man. All right. And I said, right, and Jeff Everett, uh, re you know, recorded and produced our album. And he's like, oh, I know Jeff. Oh, cool, man. That's great. Because they they had met through something. <clears throat> Jeff used to go to shows all the time. And yeah, he had, yeah, he, had a, over, yeah. he had a gaggle of laminates that he would wear. <laughs> <laughs> and so he could like almost get into any show. If right, they're like, go ahead, right. show us your past. He'd be like, <laughs> which, flipping through. Which okay, one? which one do you want to see? Uh, the one where I was out with Kiss or the one where, you know, kind of thing. He just had a million. Uh, but anyway, so he knew Zach well. And so when I told him that, you know, he's like, oh, cool. Yeah, okay, man, take care. All right, Joe. And literally one month later, Black Label Society album comes out in Japan. Hmm. And I'm like, that motherfucker. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> Not that I was uh, that mad because I'm thinking, oh, that's cool. I mean, but. He didn't have a name when we met. No. I told him the name of our band, and the next thing you know, you know, yep. whether whether you his, know it stuck somehow, and he thought, "Hey, man, I'll call, I'll call my band Black Label." Sorry. His dog was named <laughs> well, Zach. If he, if he was even, <laughs> yeah. he loves Zach. Wait, his yeah. dog was named Zach. Well, if he was even thinking that name when you said Black Label, he'd be like, "Man, I had something similar we were going to do." He would have said. He would have said, "Yeah, oh, that was, yeah. that was right." That was, yeah. you know. No, it's one of those things where he was drunk and then he woke up and he's like, "I'm going to do it because this kid, he, he's not going to go right. anywhere. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to do this. Yeah. I'm just going to walk gonna take all that over name because yeah, I'm right. famous and yeah. he's not exactly. Yeah, and it happens. But you know, it's cool. You know. Uh, to to me, because I know that's what yeah. happened, and that's you know, uh, and I've had the autograph and everything to to prove it all. So it's it's kind of like going, well, you know, I mean, I have a cool story that I oh, can yeah, tell, absolutely. you know, and, and it yeah, kind of, I think it's great, it's yeah. flattering, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, really, yeah, you, it you really can do is. It two I ways. It was cool. You can be extremely pissed off, or you can be like, man, yeah. that's pretty cool. So yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you I'm glad you went that route. And that's before <laughs> my time, so uh, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't even around, so I'm not guilty by association <laughs> by any means. By the way, so we have so we got the name. Yep. The original members, can you na name those yeah, guys? Yeah, uh, okay. So Chris Hammer on vocals, yep. Chris Eldridge on guitar, me on guitar, um, Brad, uh, no, excuse me, Keith Posey on bass, and Tony Saletti. Then after Tony left, we got Jason Miller, okay. who basically stayed our drummer until, you know, 2002. <laughs> um, so, yeah, when Tim, you know. Jay, so, love me some Jay. Yeah, so Jay was our drummer then. So, hey, Jay. Uh, the lineup changed. Uh, the lineup changed a lot over the years. Not the core. You know, the core of me, Hamer, Eldridge, and Miller stayed together for years. Uh, but we literally went through. I mean, total in total of the of the band span, uh, like ten bassists. Mm. You know, so <laughs> really, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did not I, know I'll that. I'll show you the list. It's 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 crazy. But um, well, how long did each? I one thought these... Steve Black was the guy. No, yeah. no, he didn't. He literally wasn't. Uh, he was there from ninety seven to ninety nine. No kidding. No, to 2000, excuse me. I, okay. I, yeah. I, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. And it's huh. so... Uh, <laughs> well, 10 bass in that period of time, that's like one a year almost, right? Well, from... Well, I guess it was well, over 15, 20 years. It, it, we didn't go through them that quickly. I mean, some stayed a little longer, some stayed, you know, a little short. And gotcha. and, and I... And they... And correct me, uh, they... Some of them were brought in, but we never played out with them officially. Gotcha. So okay. they weren't kind of official members. They were like unofficial members. Um... But, uh, yeah, like this, this one guy, the guy who recorded on our first album, uh, Bill Abercrombie, great player, just had a bit of a substance problem that, that you know, made, things, made things difficult for us. Uh, so, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, yeah, he was there for maybe a year or so, recorded the album with us, and then he was gone, um, uh, you know, and I'd have to pull out my phone to see the list of, you know, the synchronization of it all, but it's... You know, it's it's amazing that it took us that long to find Tim and Brad, mm. who, like like he said, when we got in the band together, we were just all just family, yeah. and and we just musically everything clicked. Uh, so, did all four of you guys coming around the same time, or was it like Tim, Brad, and then well, then Dave, or was it kind of like? Well, what happened was, <clears throat> okay, so after Steve left, we had a guy Gary Fulton, who's um, my bassist in Rival. Okay. Um, and uh, he, you know, I had played with him in Rival early on back in the early 90s when Dave was also there. So we brought Gary in. He stayed for a couple years. And then we were in on the hunt. You were in Black Eyed Susan for a little bit too, yeah. wasn't you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we were looking for uh, bassists and drummers and we were auditioning a bunch of people. And we had Tim audition. I don't think he and Brad auditioned at the same time. I think Tim auditioned one time and Brad auditioned one time and then we brought them back for another. Uh, Tim, of course, we knew right away. Oh, that's the guy. 
uh, Brad, he was still kind of green. He was still learning the instrument a little bit. So, so it was kind of like, well, he's such a great guy though. You know, you know, and even Dave, I think said in the podcast, his, his interview, you know, that, that he's like, he's going to be the guy. And I said, I get it. I, I know, <laughs> but I mean, he's got to get up to the level, you know, right. cause we were used to guys like Steve Black and Bill Abercrombie who were really, really good. I mean, set the bar super high. No. So we were like, man, you know, I just, I hate kind of taking a step back, but, but Brad stepped up. He woodshedded his ass off and came in on that final audition and nailed everything. We we're like, okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, all we needed him to step up playing wise, but personality wise, everything, he was already there. He was that, already that, and that's really cool for you to say that because that that's one of the things that when I'll never forget back, it, this was like, Oh, two, yes, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm on the job, at, you know, and I get this call from Craig. He's like, um, man, you know, we got a couple more auditions to do. We got a couple guys coming out, but he says, you know, we, we really want you and you know, the job's yours if you want it. Click. I'm going, <laughs> okay, oh, great. You know, great. You know, and I'm, I'm going, wow. Okay. Yeah. And that's the way I felt, you know, it's like, oh my God, this is mm -hmm. unbelievable. Cause I came to town and I was playing and, you know, these bullshit gigs that, you know, I'm shuffling around with Steve Miller and Tom Petty and getting yelled at for playing too loud and <laughs> shit, you know? And so I'm going, and I'm, I, and I'm foaming at the mouth. I'm going, God, I need to get this band so yeah. I can sink my teeth in and be who I am as a, as a, as a drummer, you know? Mm. And one of the things was with, you know, I, I had a conversation with Dave. I ran into him or something uh, at a bar. I talked to him on the phone or something. And I, I said, look, man, I said, I really want this gig. Talk to the wife about it. We're good. You know, I, I want to move forward with it. But I said, Brad's our guy. I said, I want to grow with Brad in this band. Yeah. I said, if you don't pick Brad and you got these other two cats, I, I said, I don't know if it's for me, you know? And I said, Brad's our guy. Take Brad or I, I don't know if I can do it. Yeah. And it, I, I stood by Brad. And I understood your feelings about, you know, this is like his first band. But it was Brad's first gig. Wow, that's a pretty big... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, coming, yeah, yeah right. coming into the biggest hard rock band that I, in in terms of what I saw here, you know, it, it, I was like, shit, you know, that that's a, you know, that, that was, that was, it was pretty cool. And, but Brad and I somehow connected in a way when we played together. Yeah. He understood... What I was feeling, where I was feeling it, and I understood what he was feeling, where he was feeling it, no. and <clears throat> and we and we were we were able to kind of grow together. He and I, he and I, kind of just did this as a band over the over the first couple of years. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to admit, I mean, you know, even though we didn't play like some of the stuff note for note, we play it. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, we we play some stuff better than than what was recorded that I, that I had. In you know, in terms of a live performance, you know that the the groove and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, it was it was one, and feel that comes yeah, into it. It was yeah. one of those things that you that you knew, and the in the back of my mind, it was like this band just lost half of their band. You know, Dave and Craig, as far as I was concerned, were, were the only ones that were left, we were, and they're yeah. looking for half a band. And it's like I didn't want to turn it into, you know a mirror image of, or, or I, I don't want to say black label 2.0, you know, I, I wanted it to be different and fresh and, right. and bring what I bring as a, you know, <clears throat> and I was like, this band, I can be myself, you know, yeah. I, I can be who I am as a player and stretch out and they're going to, they're going to let me do this stuff. And I don't have to worry about being loud. We never you know? told them to we, turn down. We would, yeah, we would go <laughs> Dude, into the, we, we would go into the, the sports page and it would look like we're playing at the Fawn Braun Center with Rick Jones on sound. Yeah. And I, I, we would just tear the paint off the wall, mm -hmm. you know, and it just felt great, you know, and that, that was the thing that I, the idea that really turned me on, you know, I, I'm going, Yes, but I really wanted that. I really wanted Brad as our yeah. man, you yeah. know. And, I just and like connect, I, said, he was, I connected with the guy. Personality-wise, you know? I mean, everything yeah. about him. I mean, we were, Absolutely, yeah. You yeah know, absolutely, we loved absolutely. him to death, you know, yeah. and he, he he stepped up. So we, we were he like, did. yeah, you got it. You got the job. You he know, did. Yeah, he, he covered the part. We were playing the yeah. Hoobastank stuff. We are playing this stuff. And we did. And, uh, cult we, of personality. Cult of personality <laughs> by Living Color. We, we, we did that outro. We did that outro that we read. Oh, that was so great. You know, it was like, golly, Brad's like, no, no. Not the cult of person. 
something like yeah. <laughs> but he he did it yeah, you know he, it, he it was did. one of those things he really worked that woodshed he, he wasn't ashamed to uh really work his craft and he really became you know a wonderful wonderful a musician wonderful musician. bass player I mean, yeah, he, he, yeah he really and did. i kind of yeah. i kind of right. feel great that we we gave him that chance me too. to grow me too with a guy like him yep. and with a band like that yep i mean i've always said that you get better when you play with good musicians. Oh, sure. Absolutely. You know, yeah. so when you're when you're jamming with guys that are of um, a certain caliber, it's like, you know, you can't help but improve, you know. Right. Yeah, you can't be at the house and get nervous and like, man, I can't I don't know, I don't wanna even want to go in there and play. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you gotta step up your game. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times that I've, you know, I got I get calls from you know, to set in and stuff. And, it, and you know, you get the guy that runs the band. Yeah, we do this. And, you know, I play this and I do that. And I, that's so great. You're going to love it. And, you know, and I, you know, if you did, you know, and, and you get there and it, it you're, you're like, you got to be kidding me. Right. It, it, this is not at all what, what, what's happening, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I'd rather be a guy that, you know, just shuts my mouth and let myself speak through my instrument mm -hmm. and take it or leave it there and that's that's yeah. was my approach with these guys i'm going I, I i need to be able to stretch out i need to have a voice you know i i want to i want to speak through my drums sure. you know and that's what i've done since i was a kid yeah. and it's worked for me but you know they believed in me you know and it was one of those things i was like they believe i believe and then we had four guys that believed together Perfect. Yeah, that's you know, a great and, analogy. So it's, yeah, right. And it was believing, just, having your bandmates believe in you makes all the difference in the world. Right? Absolutely. Because when you can go into a gig, and it, even if it's a brand new place you've never played, you got that confidence that I know my shit. Those guys know their shit. They have my back. I have their back. Right. We're going in, and it's yeah. and it just makes everything so much easier. You you relax so much quicker once you get going and you can just settle in and you don't have to sit there and get all, you know, about, right. it. you know, everybody's going to have some yeah, butterflies right. and stuff before the show, but, right. but not, not butterflies of, Oh shit, I don't yeah. know my stuff. <clears throat> right. We yeah. knew our parts. We knew our yeah. stuff. So we went in just with the total confidence and, and it, yeah. it yeah. showed. Yeah. You know, you Do you remember your first gig? That you guys had together? Oh. Bench warmer. Bench warmer. Was it? Yeah. Bench okay. warmer. We had we had nine <laughs> weeks to the bench warmer, man. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> we played the bench warmer. We sure did. And uh it was uh, I'll never I'll I'll never forget it. You know, it, it was it, So were you guys pretty I'm not saying personality wise, but musically wise, were you guys pretty tight at that point? Well, I mean, I think we we I mean, we were pretty tight in the beginning, but but we got to a point where like Tim, I alluded to earlier, we just we just didn't even have to talk. Sure, we just yeah. had that second language. I didn't even have to look at the guys; they could hear what I was playing and yeah. know, oh, this is where this is going, or I could hear what they're doing and know this is where it's yeah. going. Yeah, and music was evolving a little bit. There, the shine down came out, and you know, we wanted to learn and keep the current, you know, songs happening. And then, the, the, then all of a sudden, you know, you've got these low tunings and these weird mm -hmm. things happening. Thank God, Brad's got a five string bass. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Which was great for the sound. Yeah. And it was one of those things where we could, we had, we had versatility to adapt to a changing time, really, right. it, you know, yeah. in music, it, as much as it became kind of just gray matter after a time where you can only tune so low and, mm -hmm. and, you know, do, you know, it, it, that became, that, that becomes just weird to me, but, you know, we, we did try to bring in, you know, the current music that was on sure. the 95 playlist. Yeah. So right. the people could come in and hear that and yeah. understand it. And there were like, you know, I mean, come on, you know, the shine down, we'd hit the shine down and it was like, you know, people went, lost their down, 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 from the tons, and it would just bounce out, man. I mean, it, it, it was, it was, it was cool. We could, we could groove it out when we were on, you know, it was, it, it was, there were certain songs like the shine down and uh, yeah. porcupine tree. Oh, um, and the porcupine tree was for us. Right. I mean, it Kevin just Harris, I, I love that drummer. And I mean, we did that double time at the end. And we'd always open up like the second set or something where it wasn't like prime time in the night. But we just did it for us. Right, yeah. And I love that. The groove was so great. But that was a we drop We brought a lot D of fans load. to yeah. that band absolutely hearing we us did. play. Oh, yeah. They were yeah, like, oh, who the hell was that? You know? Yeah, absolutely we did. That, that was, I, I love playing that song. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you know? the first time I saw you guys, first time I saw you was at Sports Page. <clears throat> And I walked out of there, I'm like, 
I can't hear. Well, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drunk and I can't hear. Well, yeah, there, was, right. there was one time. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you, you had that big old yeah, right, horn, yeah, right, that yeah. horn, mm. that big old horn mm-hmm. speaker. Mm-hmm. Right. Anyway, right. Yeah. That was the right old PA in my there. Oh, yeah. And you're like... You started playing. You're like, "Is that loud?" And we're like, "Everybody's like, yeah, kind." And you went, Aah! "I'm like, okay." Uh, but I, the first time I saw it, I walked out there and I was like, "Man, <laughs> how, how in the world are these guys here?" I mean, I just, I don't know. I, yeah. I was so impressed with it. I mean, it was just the musicianship and how you guys just clicked and, and the energy that you guys brought. It's just, it just amazing. I was an instant. Like oh. the, the first, I don't even remember what the first song was, but. Just be, you know, a quarter of the way in, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. And then the, song, song. And then, you know, when the bottle before it became illegal. The, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know if you guys want to talk about it. Shush. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, well, there used to be a time. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, talk there, about there used to, Oh, yeah. No, there used good. to be a time that you guys passed around a, a bottle. Oh, yeah. Whiskey to many, the, to many. The crowd. Now many. we didn't we didn't invent that idea that idea. Well, I'm not saying you did. I'm, right. just, I'm just saying that's the first. But time But we I, had a song called "Old Man Whiskey," so without hey, why don't we do what yeah. Eli used to do when they would go, you know, give everybody tequila shots? Why don't we do whiskey shots during "Old Man Whiskey"? Oh, sounds great. You will just have a slow breakdown in the thing where singer can go around and do that, and then we'll or we'll break <laughs> out and go into another song. You coming back into it and finish the song, you know, kind of thing. So we were just and eventually after about you know. 12 or 13 years of that Craig <laughs> you know technology came along he had a pedal where he could just oh, the play play the loop and we didn't even have to play the dun, 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 and we, yeah. we did, me and Brad could hit the head <laughs> yeah, and it was still it was and, and Dave, Dave's out there you yeah, know yeah. thinking we're still back there playing sometimes you know <laughs> I never and it, it was that. still no it, yeah it was still happening you it, know? it became the part of the show yeah, and it was really that, like that was pretty the, cool we always timed it for the middle of the yeah. second set you know so that people didn't get you know, two slammers <laughs> in the, the end of the night kind of thing. Uh, yeah, but right. yeah, it was a great time to yeah. give them a break. You know, in the middle of that song, while like that thing looped, and I would just kind of noodle solo on top of it while Dave was doing his little thing. And I take a shot, and then they take a shot. They get back behind, and then when they start clicking in, then I turn off the looper and go back into playing it live, and and would just kind of ease into the back the next part of the song at that point. You know, so it. Uh, it just became a cool thing. I mean, well, it, and that was one of those organic things too, you know, where we just kind of did it playing live, you right. know, and it was just, it, it, we all knew Brad and I had to go pee. So, <laughs> you know, it, we, it, it was, it, it, it would drag, it, it would, right. yeah, it would drag <laughs> on. And it was like one of those things where how can we, how can we make this happen? So Craig comes in and he just, brings his pedal in and he would always stay up there with Dave yeah. while Brad and I would disappear, yeah. you know? And it was one of those things where we had to fill in the space a little bit and not, you know, and not disappoint and keep it empty. And, I think and, I and at, he, he did a great job with that. You know, I, I, that was pretty cool. You know, I, I got, I think I was at the first show that that got banned or whatever the hell happened. You know, didn't really? they tell you that you had to stop doing it? Because I remember Dave being up there like, well, we used to do this one thing, but yeah. we're not allowed to do it anymore. Okay. Well, probably, Some yeah. clubs had a problem with it for some reason. Yeah, e- yeah they Either did. they wanted us to buy the bottle from them or they were too worried about the ramifications if somebody drove home drunk yeah. and sued the, the bar, you know. So I get it. Uh, but you know, I mean, I guess we kind of come from a time in the late eighties when bars were, you know, still doing happy hour and, and still op- they'd be open on Sundays and Sundays would be packed. You like know? I, I was in there when I was 15 in the eighties, you right. know, was, uh, <laughs> right. that, those days, yeah. you know, um, it was a totally different yeah, scene right, back yeah. in the early, those oh, man. Yeah. late eighties and stuff. Well, like let's, uh, let's take a pause right here. Sure. Uh, you brought it up, you know, talking about bathrooms. So that just clicked something in my mind. Now <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. So cool. yes, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll start right back. Okay. Uh, right back there. Sounds great. Right, be right back. All right, man. Hello. Hello. I'm actually glad you're here. I got something for you. August 24th, 2024, a historic day for Huntsville Rock Culture. Black Label's 30th year anniversary gig. And David McCullough tribute. Expect to see acts like Five O'Clock Charlie, Angry Native, and more. As well as the original members of Black Label, such as Chris Hamer, Chris Eldridge, Jason Miller, Keith Posey, and of course Craig, Tim, and Brad. If you're seeing this after August 24th, don't worry. You will be missed out on the best time of your life. Just kidding. Not really. Let's get back to it. Um, so I got some questions that I, I put out to the audience and a bunch of different, you know friends and people that okay. you know too, some people that you don't know that uh, I've been asking for the past couple of days to send me questions because they know. Cool. So I, 
rather than me trying to do this from memory, I'm just going to kind of go off the phone. So, yeah. uh, some somebody want to know what was your f- most memorable event venue where the band performed? Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's lots of them, but is there one that sticks there, out? There's for one for me. It was uh, there, it was a night at the crossroads um, where we uh, got a pickup gig there, um, and it was there. There had to be 500 people in the place, mm-hmm. and Dave Anderson and uh, Scott Collier from uh, the original Brother Kane was there. And it, it was just one of those nights where, you know, we had a green room and, and we had just, it w- we were just on. We were just playing really, really well. Uh, you know, great sound system. Jeff and everybody over there was just wonderful. And uh, it, 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 it was just one of those rooms that was a you know, single floor with a stairway with the, you know, it had the cat walk around and everybody was up and around and we were playing and we were just doing our thing, man. And it was, uh, that, that's, that, that's one that I really remember my, you know, for me, that, 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 that was one of the memorable ones. Yeah. I, I, and there's, I, I, there's probably, you know, 10, you know, that I could, sure. that I, that I could say, yeah, but that, now, hard, I, I, I remember it, that one because it's in town and right, it's close yeah. and it's, it, it, it's close to our, it's, it's close weird to, you say the in town because it, we played so much, you know, we were every third Saturday at the, uh, page and every last Friday at the brick or whatever exactly it was right. you know, for years, we yeah. were like, you know, a regular right. monthly staple at those places. Yep. So some of those. And some of those gigs contain some of the most magical moments, like those transcendent kind of like, whoa, what's going on? Kind right. of, you know, we're out of body experience kind of thing. But the, one of the, my favorite gigs, well, favorite until it went south, uh, was when we played Nashville <laughs> at, oh. at the Gibson Cafe. Thing oh, that's a great with a band, story. With the band, band Mink up there. Um, yes. Uh, Al John Go is a good friend of ours. Uh, he worked on the radio station at the time, the WKDF. And now he works for Gibson Guitar, Epiphone Guitars, um, doing, you know, product stuff. And he, so it's he's a great, <laughs> great guy, good friend to have. Um, but we, we so we had seen their band play during the NAMM show weekend or something. We were up there and we got to talking and we're like, hey, we're going to bring you down to Huntsville and you guys play and you can bring us up here and we'll play. And yeah, yeah, cool. So this was their returning the favor, bringing us up there for the for the gig. Now, quick, we played at the bench warmer with them. Let them headline. We open for them, mm-hmm. right? Packed out, the bench warmers packed out. It's awesome. It's a great gig, and they couldn't they couldn't believe it. There, it was it was great, and we're, we're like, yeah, man, we'll see you guys again. So then Craig lines up the gig at the Gibson oh, that's Cafe. Sweet. We were the first rock band to play there, and then go ahead. Okay, yeah, so, sorry. Uh, so, sorry. So, yeah, so, <laughs> so everything to, pre- the, the, to the show went, this. The show went great. We we played. Yeah. Uh, they they were kind of wanting more originals than covers, kind of thing, which we're you know right. So we were like boning up on some of the old originals and stuff, and we had some newer songs, new originals that we had written uh, together, so that we were playing those. Um, <laughs> and, but it was a short set. It wasn't a huge set, but it was just I. Just, it was kind of a cool layout of the club, and and I just remember having a great time. And then after our set, and then Mink goes on. Um, after some at some point, uh, Dave's brother um, Will had gotten a little tipsy, and I think he got a little handsy mm. with uh, with somebody he didn't realize was with the band. No, oh. yeah. with the other band, Mink. Yeah. Uh, so so that started a you know a big brouhaha, and I was like, oh god, okay, <laughs> we got to get these. You know, we got to. Oh, sorry, we're so apologies. You know, sorry, sorry, sorry. And we exited and went back to our. We had gotten a condo. Um, my mo- mother-in-law's timeshare was right nearby the, the gig. So we were just literally a, a short, you know, hop over. And uh, Dave, at that point, Dave had drank himself to a point where you can't reason with him. Mm-hmm. I mean, even even Susie, who was the great, <laughs> yeah. you know. Mediator. Great mediator, great calmer of Dave down, yeah. uh, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't talk any sense into him. He was just ran and raving, and just, you know. So, uh, so the, you know, it, it went south, you know. Uh, but it was still a memorable gig. You know, we still all had a good time. And, and the other side from that part of the in, ending of the evening, everything was, you know, just yeah. super memorable. But the thing that I remember from it, though, the good thing was that we brought them down here to play with us and we were packed out, partying down, hopping up and down. It, it was a great show. They invite us up there like their you know it, it it's it, it that was their town yeah, yeah it, it was it was their town 
They brought and they invite us up there and we get there and we're playing and we brought more people than they did mm. from Huntsville. Yeah. And it, yeah, and it was probably 12. Yeah, you, that, you know, I mean, yeah, nobody wasn't wanted to travel. Lot, for, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a packed house. They, they, anyway. There wasn't a lot of people to see them. You know, it was one of those things that made me realize I'm going, oh, yeah. You know, you get this whole vision of, well, we, we're a Nashville band and we do all this. And and it, it it's all smoke and mirrors. You know, uh, it's one of those well, things. It is, you know? It's such a big market. That, that yeah. you know, on any given night, I mean, we could have been going up against Vince Gill or any of those hotshot guys. <laughs> absolutely. You know? I mean, yeah, no, absolutely. But we didn't I, know who else was playing that sure, night. But I mean, yeah. it's it's such a big market that I, I don't blame them for for the low turnout. I mean, yeah. granted, we brought a lot of people to their show. I, yeah, I, I don't I, I don't blame them for it. it. That's it's just one of those things where, you know, when they came into town, it was like, oh, they're mink. They're just, you know, it was this thing. I, I'm going, and then, you know, we kind of we're hoping to get reciprocated with a with you know the same kind of a thing you know and it, it just it fell a little flat for me and but and again that was that was back in the bench warmer days when I was probably in the band for maybe three four years at that point you know it wasn't that long you know and I I was still kind of learning the ropes on terms of you know the Nashville bands and and what Nashville really was and now you know, at 52, I'm like, you know, if I get any Nashville on me, I try to go wash it off of me as much as I, you know, as quick as I can, yeah, you know, yeah. over the years, you know, and, and that's where I'm at. But anyway, but I, I appreciate that story because I remember the mink, mink folks were great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they were really, really nice. And I, I loved all of them in, in that band. That was, that was pretty cool. You know, So from memorable, memorable venues that you played at, what are some of the wildest things you've actually seen in the crowd? Ooh. <laughs> and and I know some of them. I'm going to see, see if you bring them up or not. <laughs> uh, well, we've seen a lot of flesh. Oh yeah, and uh, sometimes too much. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, we've seen. I mean, fights break out between our sound man's wife and the or girlfriend and the uh, and the bar owner's wife, and you know things like just. I mean, oh, just yeah, kind yeah. of all kinds right. of. You know, we're up on stage a lot of times. We don't know what all sure. crazy shits going on behind mm -hmm. the scenes or out there. You know, you just see the end result. <laughs> we just yeah. see the end result, or yeah. or realize, oh god, we got to stop the show. What's going on? You know, what's going? You know, kind yeah. Of I always said I had the best seat in the house. You know what I mean? Right. It was great because I could be. You know, I can kind of. I, I can kind of see what's going on, yeah, yeah. you know, even when, if Craig's solo and he's not getting it and then I'm not, you know, I'm kind of, you know, going in Dave's, who knows what's going on, but you know, the, the one, the, the one thing I remember, man, is there was this, and you know, I, I, God bless her, but it was one of those things, this, this girl, <laughs> she lifted her, she, she lifted her shirt up and I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't define <laughs> the part the, what what right. was happening she you know wasn't they, a playboy they, model there was there were there were so many layers happening that um, I, you know you're, you 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 had you had kind of turn your head sideways and go god baby i i love what you're doing yeah. for us I, and i'm i'm playing it more power to you yeah I, I, all this i'm trying to process all this play i'm i'm going baby you know really it just please just to drop it back down, you know. Craig, can and, you move yeah, over? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 yeah. Fuck me, fuck me. <laughs> this isn't doing anything for me right now, you know. It, right. it wasn't like a doing doing, you know. It was yeah, just it was, a, you know, it was like. Yeah, I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> yeah, and that so you asked, I, you, I, yeah, you asked. Yeah, I don't I hear yeah right, yeah. So, so, you so asked. what what things did you see that we were not yeah. privy to? Oh, I'm sure. No, everything I saw, you guys were privy to because okay. you you guys were watching it. You know, of course, you know all the fights going on. You know the very the the you, the tension that you could cut a room. Yeah, and, and you guys just play through it and just hey. Just ignore it because as soon as you start paying attention to it, it right. almost seems like it inflames it. So I think right. that's what right. you guys did right. good yeah. was not to focus on that, not to and, stop the show and not, be yeah, all let, that, a, you know. let other people take care of what, what was right. going on out there. Yeah. So, but there, there was a lot of drunk. I mean, there was a lot of alcohol fused there was stuff a, like that. There was you a know, time there, where there we really couldn't was. we could not play the bench warmer without a fight breaking out yeah. at some point. I mean, right. there was there toward the end when we were playing there. 
it was just like every gig of another fight. What the fuck, people? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, right. I know. Jeez, we're here to have fun and blah, blah, blah. Maybe the music we played was too aggressive. I don't know. It maybe Rage Against people. the Machine. You get, you get that. You close <laughs> well, it out. We always save that for the end. You know? yeah, and it's like, and then not, uh, somebody's getting their ass kicked. Right, you know? yeah. It's like that, you know, and it would, I don't know. Maybe, Speaking of that, somebody. That's probably that, our fault. That was one of the questions somebody <laughs> sent me, it was, and it was. It's supposed to be a funny one. Or like, why do you all play devil music? <laughs> devil music? Oh, oh really? It's devil it's, music? That's the only fun music. She, yeah, right. She, they, they were kidding when they said that. I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess a qu question for you. I think I'm, I don't think it's happened since you've been in there, but have you ever had to fire a band member? No. Uh, well, I mean, yes. And, mm. and, and, and really? uh, let me explain. Yeah. Well, uh, Ooh, we've, drum we've, roll, please. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Uh, our first singer, Chris Hamer, uh, great guy, like a musical soulmate, really. Uh, and I love him to death. Still this day, we talk uh, and, and all that stuff. But he's he's had substance problems. I mean, we all have had our substances of choice and have stuff, but some absolutely. people have been able to rein it in and and not bring it into the band thing as much. Sure. Some people just can't help it. And, and he had gotten into some stuff that was just like, you know, he'd show up late for the show. He wouldn't, he'd forget his microphone, you know, and this was the drugs. It wasn't, it wasn't yeah. him, you know, any, any other normal time he would have been on time with his stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. But when you get that into to bad stuff, it kind of gets to a point where, man, you know, what do we do? We can't just keep letting this happen. Yeah. You know, we've got to, we got to cut ties and move on. So, uh, so the first time he left the band, I think it was kind of by his own choice because he knew, you know, it just wasn't working out. Uh, then, then we had gotten this guy from Iowa, Sean Wilson. Um, he, he literally like, I don't know how he got the ad, but this was kind of in the early days of the internet. Iowa. Was, really? Yeah. Iowa. What uh, part of Iowa? Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I got family Maybe. from Pottawatomie Co County. That's what, that, that's <laughs> where my parents were born. Iowa. I think you're it, talking about my the, roots the capital here. of Iowa? <laughs> Um, uh, uh, Des Moines. I think he was from Des Moines. Okay, or somewhere Sioux you know, some, some, Sioux one, City, one of the Vaughan bigger, Gang. one of the bigger. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. All right. Yeah. Anyway, so he found. <laughs> I guess we put out an ad on our our website, and he I didn't somehow take a quiz for this. Did, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. He somehow uh, got uh, wind of it. Came down. Audition. I mean, he moved down here to yeah. to be in the band. And we thought, oh wow, what dedication! This guy must be great. Eh, he wasn't that good. Uh, so right. he, we never gigged out with him or anything. He just, and we told him, man, you dude, you need to move back, you know, home. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he did. Uh, but then, um, but then Hamer came back and we got Hamer back in the band. And we were, that was when we were writing our second album and we get to the, to, to the beginning of the second album, which literally took a year and a half to finish total. And I'll explain that in a minute. But Hamer had done all the, all the writing, all the, all the, of melody writing for uh, vocal melody writing for the song, for the album, and he was kind of falling back into those old ways. Mm. Uh, and it was, and we were we would spend a whole day in the studio trying to get something, and nothing was a keeper. And back we, in those days, that wasn't cheap, and you yeah. know that that was a Ooh. that had to be a pain in the it's ass. Super you know what expensive. I mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, right. We were yeah. using gig money and stuff yeah. to you know mm. collected collective gig yeah. money yeah. To, right. to pay I, for these. So I, we're like, I man, you're, you're, days, you're wasting yeah. our money. You're wasting our time. You know, we, we've got to do something. Chris Eldridge had just played at, uh, at the sports page with Mike Roberts' show, or it was, I think it was before 5 o'clock Charlie, technically, or right around that time. He had just gotten up uh, on the stage, and then Mike had gotten Dave McCullough from uh, Senseless that had just broken up. So they jammed together that night at the sports page, one of the nights that the Mike Roberts was playing. And, uh, you know, so, you know, they, hey, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so when, when it came time and we were all talking about, you know, what are we going to do about Hamer? Eldridge said, Hey, well, you know, Dave McCullough's available because senseless is broken up really, you know, having worked with Dave so many times over the years, it was like a no brainer. So we, uh, said, you know, Dave, if you want to do this, you cool. Yeah. It'd be great. So, uh, we had, I had to be the one to, to go, over to Chris's house and say, look, man, this just really isn't, you know, you're getting back into these old yeah, ways. Yeah, that sucks. Gotta let yeah. you go, dude. Yep. And he, you know, yep. and it, I, I, I was crying. He was crying. We, we, I just, and he was pissed, but you know, <laughs> yeah. and rightfully so. But, yeah, but yeah. then again, it's, it's sometimes, you know, you, you can't, when, when you've tried 
and tried and tried, and you you're trying to talk. To yeah, you, when you have, I would imagine if you, I mean, you got multiple people in the band. It's not just you and him, right? So right. I guess you got to think about everybody, not not it just was, what it you. It was want. kind of a collective. So, uh, everybody was on the same page. If yeah. if anyone had been against it, we wouldn't have done it. Yeah. But but everybody was like, yeah, this is not going to work out. We need to get somebody. Dave's available. We know Dave's great. Yeah. Let's just get Dave in. You know, mm-hmm. and and so so Dave, and that wasn't even the first band that Dave had to come in and save us from Hamer. Back when I was in the band Abstract, uh, Chris was the original singer and he brought me into that fold and, you know, I was playing with those guys for the longest time. And then he started kind of falling into this kind of flaking out kind of thing. And uh, so we had audition- we were auditioning singers and uh, the night that Dave came out to audition, I was like, I know that guy from high school. Okay, cool. You know, I've been to the same school, you know, graduated together. And uh, it's like, I didn't even know he sang, you know? Mm. And because, uh, yeah, I mean, if he was, you know, he, I guess his high school band, I'd never seen, you know, I had my own pro- band at the time profile. And um, so in abstract, he comes out, he's sick. You could tell he's kind of got a cold. We had a few songs that we had given him just to learn, and he learned them and we played. But there was this one song, Tesla's We're No Good Together. Dave nailed it, and we recorded it you know, to be able to go back to and listen to afterwards. But he nailed it so spot on that we went, we went that night, we went back to, uh, you know, without Dave, Dave, you know, went home and we all went back to Mark and Greg's where our bass player and drummer's house and put him in uh, the tapes. Uh, like he had a double cassette. We were playing the Tesla version to what Dave had just recorded. And <laughs> it was, I swear to God, spot on. You could not tell the difference between him and Jeff Keith. Wow. We were like, this is the guy. No. Oh, dude, you know, I had never heard anything like it. And he was sick. No. And he sounded that good. We were like, oh, my God. So anyway, so that that was my first band with Dave. And then we had uh, Rival. He brought me into Rival after Piston Furious folded or kind of lost a couple members and then brought me and Gary Fuller. And then we became Rival from 91 to 92. And then uh, that's when I um, started Mums the Word after that. And then in 94, you know, Got together with Hamer Eldridge and myself for Black Label. Yeah. Uh, so, um, what was the question? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I kind of got off on the tangent there. Oh, yeah. no, uh, uh, I'm not sure what what that question was. <laughs> but sorry anyway, sorry about that. So, if if either one of you, and if you don't want to answer, that's fine because I'm putting you on the spot here. Um, and I guess we'll start with, with you. If you okay. had anybody to replace you in Black Label, who do you think would be the best fit? Oh, to replace me? Yep. Oh, wow. Ugh. Um. That gives Tim some time to think. I can see it going down. I've always thought that would. I always thought it'd be cool to see Mike Roberts in there in that mix, you know. But but he's a different player. I mean, he he's, we have different styles. So yeah. you know. So I mean, but just I love Mike to death, sure. and I love his playing so much that I would just l- have loved to hear that. And hopefully, you know, when we do the uh, anniversary gig, he's going to be able to jam with us and all that stuff. Um, but uh, you know, I mean, Preston, of course, it mm. could you know, run circles around me as far as, you know, all his technique and things. So, uh, he would be a good guy. Um, Chris Eldridge, of course, uh, the original other guitarist with me. Uh, now, now you can't list everybody. No, we have one. I mean, yeah. Okay. But, yeah. But Chris I mean, was, you, you know, know, Chris there's, is part there's, of the band, there's, there's, you know, technically. There's Ronnie so, Weatherall, you know, there's, <laughs> Ron, there's, yeah. I love him to death. He's a great player. Yeah, Ron I, could do it for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, uh, well, you, I guess you, more, you don't want to just name one. I mean, that's that's a well, terrible that's a terrible question. I told you I was going to say you're loaded, but yeah, that's I mean, right. you make it hard <laughs> for no, us. That's cool because fine, I mean, because you know. I love all those guys. Yeah, right. You know, and there's yeah. no disrespect. Is, no disrespect yeah, to anybody. I, you know, I'm sure. <laughs> everybody's kind of got everybody's kind of doing their own thing in their own lane. So it's like comparing, you know, apples and oranges. Yeah. Well, I, I guess what I meant was the best fit for for Black Label. Now, obviously, those guys, any one of those guys are amazing to doing whatever, but I mean, as far as the fit for Black Label... Well, see, that's the thing. We just, we had a personality and everything meshed, you know, we were family. Yeah. So, it was just... Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of, you would have to find somebody sure. that could fit, fill gotcha. in that as well. Because yeah. Black Label was, it was yeah. just as much as about our, our relationship off stage as it was on stage. Yeah, yeah. and calling it a Black Label, again, would be tough. Yeah. When, trying... It you know now it's like it, it just be it, it wouldn't be the same yeah. you know I, so you I talked just, about your thirty year anniversary coming up yeah when when is that where's it at uh, it's August twenty fourth okay at the Shag Nasties okay yep yep 
We Who? we had toyed with moving the date a little bit, uh, but Chris Hamer, uh, who's down in Florida, who's going to be coming up for the show. Great. Uh, That's fantastic news. I'm learning that. This is great. Oh, he's, that, I thought I had told you already. This is wonderful. That's okay, great. Okay, see, he's coming up for the show, but he'd, he'd had a thing with his neck recently where he had to have surgery because he lost all, you know, control of his left arm and, you know, feeling and stuff. And so he's recovering. You know, he's had a surgery already, and he's going to have another one, I guess, soon. Uh, so he was recovering from that. And so he, he hasn't been able to use his left arm hardly at all. Uh, you know, so, I mean, you know, we're just, we're all getting old and falling apart sure. basically, but basically when he stopped drinking a year or so ago, that's when all the, all these pains and things came, you know, out of the woodwork that I guess had been repressed for so yeah. long from all the drinking. So when he went, you know, clean, that's when all this pain and suffering and all these things were starting to happen to him and his body was, you know, you know, basically fighting him back, you know, I guess. And, uh, so, so we're, um, you know, so so we want to go ahead and get that, you know, and and play that show because it's it's you know you're only going to have one thirty year anniversary, sure. right? Yeah. Um, and technically, yes, the band didn't quite make it to the thirtieth year. We 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 could have, but uh, we almost got there. Um, but yeah, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but uh, you know, we just we've always had in mind. You know, we we thought about originally a twenty five year anniversary thing, and that just never you know came to fruition and panned out. So we thought, well, we'll do it on the thirtieth, you know, and and so it's a it's a big year, it's a big uh, you know big anniversary kind of thing, and we just really wanted to, you know, because you know if you've been in this scene as long as we have, uh, you know, it's kind of like you know we we had so many friends like you know Mike Roberts and Angry Native and all those guys, uh, you know that we've played with and and done shows with that that we thought, man, wouldn't it be great to get everybody together? You know, we'll play some old Brack Label originals. We'll play some, you know, stuff. We'll play stuff with them. You know, we'll all do big jams yeah, together and stuff up. like that. You know, just make a big kind of thing because, you know, it's it's rare for any band these days to have this kind of longevity. Absolutely. You know, yeah. uh, and and granted, I'm the only one that's had the total longevity. But but Tim, I mean, to be fair, he was uh, 18 to 20 years almost. True. You know, uh, so he, he and Brad technically played in the band longer than all the other, you know, the original guys. Thanks, man. You know, we did actually. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, and, but that's a, te- but that's really a testament to. Once Dave and I found the guys, right, and we yeah. all were just like that, you know, uh, you know, th- those kind of, it's <laughs> you, you, ho- you hope your whole life for a band like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it's it's like yeah. that's what you know, and we go on stage and it was like, man, this is what I've always wanted. You know, is is having these kind of guys behind me and just playing this kind of music and everything about it was great. You know, yeah, there was times where we'd get a little too drunk and, you know, our, our, our qual the quality of what we were that, doing. That's minimal, man. Suffered. Yeah. But, but it was, yeah. it was all in fun. Yeah. This band right. has always been about right. fun, you know, the whiskey thing and the, you know, we, we've never shied away from, you know, being too loud and, and, uh, and, and just trying to have a good time because, man, we're we don't know how long we're here, so we mm. just need to fucking blow it out while we can yep. and have a good time. And and uh, so, yeah, we. I think one of the one of the, the good things, well, one of the things that I notice about Dave is how involved he got the audience, which you don't see that much anymore. Um, I know, obviously, Mike Roberts does, and, and a lot of people do, but Dave was unique in his ability to get the whole, no matter where you were at when it was a break or even if it was on stage, you know, he made you feel like you, you were part of the whole experience, not, not just watching it. That yeah. was, that was part of what black label was. Yeah. It wasn't just about coming and seeing the band. You know, it was, it was about the whole thing. Yeah. You, it wasn't, it, it, when you were, when it was a black label show, everybody in the place was part of black label. It was a black label night. Yep. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't just about the band, and that we didn't that, hang out in the green room and yeah, wait. We, right, were, yeah, we were out there yeah, talking with everybody. Right, get, you know, you know. And I, I wasn't really social. You know, I, I, I'm not. You know, that's just the way I am. Well, you it. had a stalker. Yeah, that's probably what you're trying to keep away. <laughs> <laughs> That dude keeps yeah. staring at me, man. Come what on, man. No, no. no. <laughs> but you know, it, it. But that that was the thing: the chemistry of the band, and the energy of the band, and the way that everybody connected with us, yeah. it wasn't just a band. It was an event. It was, it, 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 it was a ceremony. I yeah. mean, I really, I mean, it was, it was one of the, I mean, the, I mean, there were nights at the brick 
I mean, yeah. I, I mean, come uh, on, man. Yeah. There were 350 people in that place, and they were lined about. It, it was just crazy, yeah. you know. It, it, and they loved it. We, we, the bikers loved us. You know, why did they all of a sudden say you got to turn it down? Well, that, that yeah, that, I don't. They were trying to attract a, a newer, different kind of yeah. clientele. Yeah, and you know, was, yeah, and, and so the biker people just wasn't weren't really who they wanted to have on a regular basis. Cause right. we were there once a month for, yeah. for years right. and yeah. years and years. So it kind of got to the point, I think where they were like, man, black lady was really loud. We always have to tell them to turn down. Yeah. And, and sometimes they bring in the rowdy folk, which, you know, it's not our fault. We're just playing yeah. and they know we're playing every last Saturday of the month right. or whatever it was. And so. I know that trends, I think we're kind of changing now. And now that I know looking out where bands play, I mean, we've, you've got a, a seven to 11 gig now. You've got an eight to twelve gig now. Mm -hmm. You know you've got these early things that don't <clears throat> run till two in the morning. Right, the pandemic shut a lot of that down. And, yeah. You know, in all respect to the business folks, they probably you know saw that kind of trend happening. Yeah. Right. So, and I, I, you know, I, I, I just, I, they all, I do know they made money with us every oh, sure. time. Every time we were we, there, that's why I was kind of surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah we I, set, we used to set records like at the page and at yeah, break and that for, kind of, for night sales. You know, yeah, and, and I, be like, I, oh my god, we never did this much money. I understand from a business standpoint and stuff. I mean, it's not like we're freaking Aerosmith or something, you know. Mm. But it, it was, it, it was just one of those things where. You know, it was probably just some stupid statement or something between an interaction. Well, that's between, happened. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and <laughs> and it, it probably didn't have to happen. Yeah. And it breaks my heart for that kind of stuff because it, it's just so silly. I remember you know? the last time we played at the station? Yeah. When uh, Dave... Oh, yeah. Oh, we, oh yeah. And the, yeah. Oh, Dave oh, yeah. was on one of his... Uh, where he's had just just too much where you can't talk any sense into him yep. uh, nights. And no. uh, he there was a new manager <laughs> running the place, yep. uh, still owned by Mark Kamara, though whom we knew and, <laughs> so, and were friends with. This is so great. And so Dave is... I feel is, like Spinal the, Tap the, the, or something. Yeah, the, yeah. So the new manager's yeah. not never seen us before mm -hmm. and didn't know how loud we were going to be. Oh, yeah. And, and of course, the first thing out of his mouth was, turn him down, turn him down to our sound guy. And he's just like, you know, and our sound guy just loved it. Like Coliseum levels, you know. That's mostly my fault. I'm sorry. No, yeah. well, I mean, in a sense, but, yeah. but he <laughs> he ran those front of house, like, you know, just insanely loud. He, yeah. he used to say, yeah. the, the bass always drops off at the dance floor, so I have to push it extra hard just to get the oh. bass to go to the back of the room. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, whatever you got to say, man. <laughs> whatever, yeah, right. Uh, but so so he, Dave was <laughs> having fights with this manager about our volume from the get-go. And so the more that Dave drank, the more Dave was like starting to call him out on stage. Well, if that fucking manager wouldn't blah, blah, blah. blah. He's a pussy. Right, He's hiding yeah. in his office, blah, blah, blah. So, so he just yeah, kept on and yeah. kept on. And we're like, Dave, come on. Let's just start the song. Let's, you know, just forget about it. Let's, let's play. And we're in the middle of a song in the second set, I believe. Middle of a song. And the owner of the bar, who wasn't at there the whole night, but the manager guy called him and got him down there, mm. walks right up to the stage and points right at Dave and is like, you're done. You're out of here. Get off this stage now. Yeah. And we just stopped playing. And we're like, okay, I guess we're yeah. done. Sorry, everybody. Good night. Uh, so that was. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that was the same bar that we had beer bottles thrown at us. And oh, you, you remember yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it, you know, so we always went in there with a little bit of an attitude to begin with. You know, <laughs> yeah. We really didn't give a shit if we played there again or not, no. you know. And it was one of those things as well, you know, we, we played a bar. I'm not going to mention the bar, but it was one of those things where we we were playing too loud. And um, so, you know, <laughs> arrogantly, we uh, just started playing like Mr. Rogers, quiet, yeah, right. you know what I mean? And we're, we're playing hot for teacher, like... De -de 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 the quietest I've ever played that yeah, song. Right, yeah. I couldn't even hear myself yeah, play. Yeah. I was just... Yeah, because they wanted us to turn down, you know, and it was one of those things where uh, Dave's like, you know, screw this. I, I said, we're going to go down. We're going to go down in flames, yeah. man. So we, <laughs> and we, we turned just, those amps and up. And we just... Man, we Ted Nugent it, man, you know, and just let, and, and we never play it there again. Right. You know, we, I knew I, if we're, if we're going to burn the bridge, burn it all the yeah, way down, exactly. you know, that's, that it's was one kind of, those, of our, but, but if you bring black label in, that's what you're going to get. That was what I always said. And that was every, always our premise. Right. You know? And I, and yeah, I never, yeah, right. Dave did 
you know, the, the lion's share of the booking. So, so we never got to talk to those people, but right. we would, he, if we had a new gig, we're like, okay, Dave, you know, do they know how loud we're going to be? Oh right. yeah, I told them, right. I, but do you, do they really know? Have they seen any videos yeah. of us? Like, oh, yeah, it's, it'd be yeah. cool. Yes. Yeah. As soon as we start out of the gate, boom, oh my God. Jesus. They yeah. come to our sound yeah. guy and you could see the yeah. owner going like this and they're like, TVs oh, are you know. vibrating yeah. off the wall. And <laughs> you know, shit. Every, yeah. Your barrel tiles are vibrating <laughs> off the roof. You know, so, you, so we had that happen label, before. You needed yeah. to know, you needed right. to understand that we're a loud band. We don't have a, yeah. We don't have a volume knob that we just go right. from 10 to 5, you know, just, it was like, it was 0 or 10, you know, yeah. that was Black Label, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, we have our happy spot, and that's that's <laughs> where it is. We can't go and, and below it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Tim yeah. hardly never needed to get mic'd, you know what I mean? He's just yeah, such a yeah, hard hitter yeah. that yeah. it was just like, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what room we played, you know, we could... That's why I really wanted the gigs. I could be who I was, you know. Yeah. It was like, and if you asked me who could replace me in Black Label, I'd say Taylor freaking Hawkins. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, just all the way, full yeah. bore, you know, it, it, that kind of player, yeah. you know. Yeah. It wouldn't be anybody that I knew in town here, you know. Yeah. It, it'd be somebody like that, you know. So um, you talked a little bit about a lot of these instances, it sounds like Dave was a, the center point of it, kind <laughs> of. Well, I, no, I wouldn't say that because I've had my moments. Tim's had his moments. We've all Dog. had our moments. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, whenever you, if you ever came to a gig where Tim had a baseball cap on, you knew that wasn't a good night. That some <laughs> shit was about to go down. <laughs> that, you know, Why I, mean, I, uh, well, I, I couldn't do my hair. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, no, it, no, 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 it was no. kind of our signal that okay, Tim's having a night, so we just need to <laughs> leave him well, alone. Leave him alone and, and yeah. do let him do his thing. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> something was wrong. Either you know, you know, but uh, you know, but we've all had our nights. You know, sure. I mean, I, I'm not at all. You know, I mean, I've had a gig where I played at, at the Huntsville Speedway for this big all day band thing, and my dumbass didn't have anything to eat and I get to the gig and I start drinking and we're there all day watching all the bands and stuff. Mm -hmm. By the time it came time for us to go on stage, mm -hmm. I, I could barely walk up the, the ladder to get there and I don't remember starting songs. I don't remember finishing songs. I remember at one point I fell back on my ass on the stage. I was somehow still playing, but you know, I was just going on muscle memory, but I just remember I, I, I felt so bad. Mm -hmm. I have never felt as low as I did that gig, and I apologize profusely. But our drummer still left, Jason. He that was he was that was the final straw for Jason that gig. Uh, but you know, we, so we've all had our bonehead moments yeah. and things like that, you know. And so Dave is not to blame for for anything specific because you know we we're all grown ups, you know. And some of us, you know, well, have was, a, we it, have a point where we drinking too much and we we go past the point of being able that to be was, reasoned with. That Everybody's was, that, got was that kind of the theme of the band though. You know, it was like, you got, you want to come out and have a good time and party and stuff. We'll party right there with you. And that was, that, that was just the, the thing that, that was expected. Right. You know what I mean? It was, and you know, yeah, it goes over the edge sometimes. And you know, you get to a point where you're just like, I, you know, I, you know, you gotta, you gotta get your arms around it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, the band was great. It was just a great band. And yeah, when even we, were, we, we were on, nobody could talk. I, I don't care. You talk to pygmies. You talk, you talk any leader dog or whoever, right. whoever at the time, nobody could touch us. It, it, it was, it was a great band. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, bra you know, I, I like to brag on these guys because it was one of those things where I could, I could see it when they gave me the call. I was like, this band's got the, the guitar players got the chops. He could, he, he just a great player and you know brad it was it was just one of those things where i was, it was like, like a perfect storm of you know, exactly coolness yeah. you yeah. know and it just happens every once once in once not in a many while. people get that chance to be in a band yeah. that just yeah. has that much yeah click, and everybody you know? everybody thinks together and you know to be honest you know we didn't hang out a lot together you know extracurricularly i, I mean we'd go and we'd, we'd you know we'd hang out every every now and again but it wasn't like you know we talked to each other every day and we were like friends it was like we got together at the gig, and that's the way that we or communicated. Your, or and, your and Angela Palooza parties. Well, yeah, that you know, <laughs> yeah, true, <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. You know, but it, but we 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 had enough distance between one another, you yeah. know, and uh, respected the family thing that was going on. Because everybody the, has their own lives. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And and but the guys, you know, when me, you, and Dave got together for rehearsal and a gig. That was our time, man. And it was like, 
you know, something, and they were good times, yeah. something happened. It was, it, we just, we were able to just do it. And, and the sound, you know, and, and the things that happened sonically with the band was great. It, mm -hmm. it, it was, I, I would, I would walk out of gigs like I jumped in a pool, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. I've seen you, it. you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, girls wanted, you know, they, they wanted to hug me and say, thank you so much. We had a great time. I, I, please, <laughs> please stay away from me. Yeah. You know, like a and it was one of those <laughs> things, but every time I did that though, I was thankful because, you know, I, I said to myself, I said, you know, I gave it everything I had and it freaking poured out of me, yeah. you know, yeah. it just poured out of my poured out of my soul sure. and my body yeah. you know and that's that's what i would that's what i was shooting for mm -hmm. and that band gave that to me yes and i i will i will never forget that yeah that's and like, like you, you said, know <laughs> that's black label is the only band of all the bands i've been in that gave me those kind of transcendent moments right mm -hmm. where exactly. i was like that out of body thing like what is happening i mean you know you're you're just so in tune i mean everybody's not even have to look at each other and it's just everything is just right yeah you don't have to think about it yeah. you don't you, you don't it's just happening for and some I, reason and i've had yeah. great great uh, yeah. you know moments with other bands too but black label was the only moment that out of body kind of moment stuff were like yep. you know just yep. surreal you know so uh yeah yep. it was something special for yeah sure. really yeah really yeah so at the beginning of this <clears throat> season you know stuff that you know, happened with Dave, and we're, we're going to get into that. Yep. At the very beginning of it, I was like, you know, I think I said before on an earlier podcast that I, I kind of questioned what I was doing here and if I want to continue and everything. So once we made the decision to keep on going, that we were going to dedicate this entire season, the season's like about 10 videos, and uh, you're going to be the last one um, for this season. And um, so we're going to hit it pretty hard. Yeah. Um, if there's anything that you don't want to talk about, by all means, we won't talk about it. But I'm going to bring stuff up, and uh, we'll just just have a conversation. Yeah. Right? Like you said, rip shoot. out the bandaid, you know? Yeah, yeah. shoot, man. Um, so what? Obviously, like you said before, everybody's got their issues. I mean, Lord knows I've had my issues. Um, at what did you guys see a point? You know, I, I know Susie had a lot to do with this, but was there a point? So Susie was a uh, um, Dave's wife, and she passed away. And obviously, anybody's going to have issues if that happens, especially if you've been with your spouse that long. Um, was there any points up to that, prior to that, that you see, kind of seen Dave? Oh, yeah. Uh, even before all of that, um, there were times with with his pancreatitis, right. which at the time we didn't know what it was, uh, that we couldn't even complete our shows. Mm. Uh, like we'd get two sets in and, you know, he'd be like, I can't do the last set. It's just too much, re you know, Gerd or whatever it was coming up, uh, hitting his vocal cords and, and frying out his voice, you know, mm. and I get it, you know, you, nobody can sing like that. Uh, but so you but, didn't, you didn't know he was having those medical problems then? Well, uh, we knew he was having problems, but he, at the time he didn't have it diagnosed gotcha. and he had only gone like to the Vanderbilt thing and, and stuff to, to get tests. But, you know, he would never, he's like, they don't know what's going on, but I think he was just trying to covering up with they were probably telling him dude it's your drinking yeah your drinking is what's making this happen there you go yeah, and and, and he yeah, even admitted it's on his yep. you know interview with you about just drinking and and being he couldn't keep anything down food wise so he would just drink yeah. you know and and so that it just kind of got to that that part where he was just you know yeah not the day we knew you know and we would still go out there we still have you know fun you know but his voice just wasn't at the level that it used to be at and it was just you know the just the constant drinking and stuff and then you know we there were some nights like like remember right before the new year's show when we had that great practice yeah fantastic the practice that i'm before, going this is right going to be awesome new year's, we this thought is going to be like was all the new year shows that we've he always sounded done. great he did he was doing yep. a great job he he wasn't having the the reflux problems and whatnot so we were like man just whatever you did today dave do that for the gig, yep. whatever, every, yep. repeat yep. that day on New Year's, yep. uh, you know, because that's that's what we need. And he, of course, he got to the. I think he'd already been drinking from home. Got to the show got early, the show, got to yeah. the sh and was drinking. And so, you know, two songs into our set, and he's passed out. We got to get an ambulance. ambulance that's the last memory I have 
of Black Label yeah. is Dave getting carried away in a fucking ambulance, you know? Yeah, and not I the hate way we that, that, that break, it, you know, it breaks my heart yeah. because I, I really think it could have been something that, that could have been, you know, avoided. Yeah. And, uh, of course, Susie was there and then, you know, now, you know, Susie left and then after that it was, you know, it, it was one of those things. But, I always, always reached out to him. You know, I, I would always text him and say, hey, dickhead, you know, what are you doing? You know, or, or something that sure. would, you know, get him pissed off or strike something to, you know, give me a response, at yeah. least know he's okay. You know, as a, you know, kind of a brother kind of thing. So, the, you know? so that was the last show that you guys played together? Yep. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it was uh, 2021. 20, 2021. Yeah, yep. Uh, yep. Jan, uh, New Year's Eve show. Yep. And that, and, and that's, uh, that's actually the first time I think that, me, Craig, and Brad kind of were together as musicians, which, you know, would have been really cool if we all three could have been here with that. No big deal. Um, but um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's anything that, you know, we could have done different. You know, I, well, I, was there I, any discussion when he, you know, when he got put, to, I'm, you know, when he went to the hospital and get left, you know, put out in an ambulance, was there a discussion between you three not, of saying, hey, you know, what's going on? Or no, not? I was, I no. was genuinely concerned thinking it was something different. Yeah. I did not have any idea yeah. it was the booze. I, cause I, I had yeah. gotten there just before our set. Yeah. So I did not get a chance to see yeah. what I, what everybody else had seen. Yeah. But, and, and, you know, even, you know, getting, uh, you know, talking to the bar owners that night, they were like, dude, you know, you're, you're a good friend. If you, if you're sticking with, you know, cause we, you know, we had given Dave so many chances, you know, when he would screw oh. up really bad and he would come back, sorry yeah. guys, yeah. you know, and you know, we would make, you know, kiss and make up. There was, I mean, cause just like any family, you know, you're going to sure. have falling outs and you're going to have your makeup and all that kind of thing. Yep. And that's what we did. Um, and, and this was kind of that last straw. You know, it's like, dude. Well, the I, last couple of shows, I've I thought been it was to. a health thing, and then come to find out, no, he was just drunk. Uh, so I was like, right, that's that's it. I, right. I can't do yeah. this anymore. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, I can see your guys' frustration. Yeah. towards the end there because he just he he wasn't listening to us, and I was like, man, if you're not going to do it for yourself, then then we're, there's nothing, there's no hope. Well, you know? the thing that broke my heart was that you know we had no limitations with the guy. We didn't have to worry about picking a song and and saying, oh. This cat can't sing it, you know, because he could. Yeah. I mean, anything we, he's we, saying, he we, would we be could. Able to sing. I mean, you can sing Ronnie James Dio and Iron Maiden, and I, I mean, so it what you know the Shine Down stuff pushed him a little bit, and but it was one of those things where we had a guy where we had we had this complete palette mm -hmm. of yeah. songs that we could choose, yeah. no matter what came down the pike that was popular. Dave could fucking sing it, you know, yeah. and I love that. And he knew he had a he he knew he had the best band in town to back him up, you know. And we had it we had it by the balls, you know. And that, that's that's what breaks my heart, you know. Is it? It's one of those things where I I I I always knew what it was, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, panic attack and all that. That's it's just an excuse, yeah. you know. It, it, that's all it was, you know. And you know, it, it just, it, th that whole thing wrapped its arms around him and he couldn't get away from it, yeah. you know? And I, I wish I, 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 well, I, but he did, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, rehab, yeah, you know, yeah, well, yeah, he did, but it's one of those things where I, I ah, you know, you see it happening, yeah. you know, and, and there's nothing you can do, you know? I, and yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we would always, we were we were open to him. He could come to us with anything, At any time. Sure. Sure. And I offered to come and and help or what whatever. I mean, shit, I, I could build anything. Yeah, I, I could, I'll do whatever you need to do. You I know? can per, kind of put myself in his shoes. Just yeah, sure. And, and think of a little bit of what he was thinking. And maybe guilt was in his mind of man. You know, I'm letting these guys down. That's you know, a good point. Good right, point. right. Yeah, I'm not, not going to talk to him because you know I feel right. so embarrassed. Yeah. You know, I know. I know I have a problem. I can't get a hold of it, and I don't want to bring anybody else down. Right. Yeah, and so I mean, a well, it's point. a guy. It's an ego thing. It's sure. like yeah, you can control it. Hey, I got I, this. Is under control. This yeah. is under control. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and but it's not. You right. know, and it's one of those things you don't want to. You don't want to feel like you're weak. Yeah. You know, and it's right. a guy thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, I, Dave, I get Dave that. Dave was proud. Yep. Yeah, very, very, and he was a strong, 
strong personality. Strong. Well, he was the guy. He was the reason we were so popular. I yeah. mean, David, he he would kiss me on the lips. <laughs> he, he, I mean, just and not even feel bad about it. Or you know, it, it was just he he just loved everybody. We're brothers, yeah. yeah, he yeah. just loved everybody. Sure. You know, it was one of those things. It, it grossed me out. I felt his whiskers. And I'm going, <laughs> what the, you know? But the, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he, he, it wasn't like that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just one of those things. He was just happy to see you, you yeah. know, and happy to you know hang out and yeah, let's you know let's have a good time. You know that that that's the kind of guy he was, and that's the way I want to remember him. You yeah. know, I, I, because I really still, do. he was that guy. You yeah, know? he was it's, totally. The drinking was when he wasn't that guy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it got to a point where, yeah, he wasn't that guy. And we've we seen it, you know, and, and we would joke about it with him and, you know, it, it, but <laughs> it, it's one of those things where it's like, man, you know, when it wraps around you like that and it gets a hold of you like that and it gets out of control like that, sometimes, it, you know, there's no turning back. And I will say, I'm not sure what else was going on you know, to, you know, to get you to the point where you want to end it, you know? Yeah. I, I, I love, I mean, I love, I adored Susie for, I mean, she was. Salt of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> he was, I mean, I, 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 she, she was his reason for getting up every morning. I mean, uh, yeah, she I was the raw, I mean, yeah. uh, you Su know. The, Susie just, was the, I mean, at late nights. At the after the after Swartz counting gigs. money at, after yeah, counting she the, got money, the money she got, paid, paid everybody. everybody he's drunk I'm drunk <laughs> and she she's counting the money making sure everybody gets their you know yeah. gets their money and she I mean but see Brad lived yeah. in Decatur so he had to take off yeah right as soon as Tim right. was done loading and got his pay he was gone because I was so, a drummer I had to load up just as much as the yeah, fucking PA right. I'm like, so, I'm so I was PA so, out, so you know? usually Dave yeah, was in right. there chatting with people while Susie yeah. and I were loading the PA out yeah right, right together yeah. so I mean for her to be uh, th that wear that many hats sure. for this for this band rolling right. cables up I, yeah I, I, just, I mean uh, she yeah. she did it all yeah she was one of the and when, when when she when she passed away I was like oh I I really got worried about Dave yeah. I, I I really did yeah. you know and I I wanted to wanted to help i reached out to him i you know and I, and I tried to be the best friend that i could and he had a really really great support group he had a he had a lot of a lot of folks supporting him and it's just one of those things that yeah. you know yeah, it, well, it, it what, is what it is what i haven't said out loud on this podcast which is, i think everybody could figure out but dave did take his own life um we'd mentioned that he had passed away but we didn't say how and not that I'm going to say how, but just know that he took his life. And the reason I'm bringing it up is like, I think it could be a learning point um, or at least give people an indication of, you know, hey, you don't really know what somebody's thinking. I mean, you think they do. They put on a good show. Yeah. At, at some, But the, <clears throat> everybody who's in that space gives some little indicators of what's in their mind. And I think that's important to, um, you know, if you know anybody who's going through stuff like that, um, you know, just don't think it's all right all the time because you, you never know what's in somebody's mind. Absolutely. I, 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 we, I, yep. I think everybody was completely blindsided. By yep, the absolutely. News because I agree. he gave Based no on what indications. Gave, yeah, the information that he gave us. I mean, we knew he was depressed, but he gave no <laughs> indications. He, 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 I like I spoke to you earlier. I think he had been thinking about this for a long, long time. I think time. so too. Me too. I Looking back so. on it, I, yeah, I yeah. Think you're right. When when Susie was he, gone, he, and, he and was, that's why he didn't play his hand or show his hand. He was trying to think. Okay, when everybody's not looking, that's when I'll do it. Yeah, right. And that's what happened. And not and expecting it. Yep. And yeah. we were all just like, what? I know. It's just. Yep. It's it. Yeah. For for a guy that was as strong and as proud as he was. You got to know that what really killed him was heartbreak. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, love he, and heartbreak. When she ended. died, yep. he basically died too yeah, he at did. that point. And, yeah. and yeah, he really did. Like he said, I think, uh, you know, she was his reason for, or you said, I think, uh, he, you know, she was his reason for getting up every day. And, and so it was, I, I get it. I totally get it. Uh, but, but in my mind, as a musician who who loves just playing on stage and playing with my brothers and, and things like that, in my mind, there's no sadness or or any kind of thing that could 
beat the feeling that I have when I just get together and jam with these guys. Sure. You know, even if there's nobody in the room, even if there's nobody right. in the room, it, you know, right. but uh, yeah, I could still, I could die playing a guitar on my porch, you know, but the point being is that not only do we have music as an escape and as a thing that, that we look to, but, but all the friends that Dave had, yeah. you know, from being a musician and, and the guy knew everybody yeah. and everybody knew Dave. You couldn't go anywhere without. Yeah. I, 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 right. I, I hey, don't know. Like the, yeah, Dave, I, I, you know? yeah. Right. He, he knew everybody. And it was one of those things that, you know, the heartbreak for me is I know that it's never going to happen again. No, yeah. I'm never going to hear his voice. Yeah. Well, here's, here's the kicker for me was that two weeks <sighs> before Dave, my dad, passed mm. he was 83 <sighs> the very next week the very next thir- week from that thursday i put out the word that hey guys the anniversary show is on yeah start working right. on I, your I, stuff. Got, I remember dave, the text they never replied to my I, text i know yeah right he I, i'd talked to him about that not i don't think it was on the podcast but when we went out to dinner later after that podcast right. we talked about it. he's like yeah he said we're getting yeah. together yeah and, right because i'd ask him hey what's your plans i mean you're still going to take it easy for a while oh, or, yeah. he's like no nah, man he said you know we got the anniversary coming up he said i'm looking real forward to it wow because <laughs> i mean because he didn't answer my text that week and then literally a week later he was gone so yeah. it was like you know, and then a couple weeks after that his brother mason you know uh yeah. passing away from cancer so it, it was just it's it's been a whirlwind of a year to say the least and and we're all kind of processing the grief in our yeah, own ways. But, sure. But yeah. the thing to remember about Dave is just the good person that he was. I mean, yeah. he was such a good guy. And, and his voice. His voice well, was incredible. True. I mean, he I, could go I, into a studio and just one take at like Coverdale, man. Most just, of those, most just, of the songs bam, that he one sang take. on our second album. He could do it. You know? He went in there and did them one take. Yeah. I know. You know, and it's, yeah. it's just a testament to, uh, you know, his talent, his gift that he his had. Gift. It, yeah, yeah, he, he had a, he he had a real gift. He could the phone book yeah, and did. it would sound cool, you know? Yep. I mean, he could... Uh, right. What yep. I did notice about him, too, you know, he just made everybody feel, <clears throat> obviously, was when he wasn't in that state, but everybody he was around, you could just see people smiling. Yeah. As soon as he would start walking up, they you know, it would brighten their day right. just oh, to yeah. be around him, you know, because he was, you know, infectious. I mean, he was just had that aura about him that was so good but yeah. when he was off man he was off i mean there, there, <laughs> oh it was there, like there was yeah no it was between. terrible yeah, terrible right, right. <laughs> terrible they were terrible, terrible the nights times, right? oh god yeah they were terrible <laughs> nights don't get me wrong man mm-hmm. yeah and you can laugh about it now at the time it sucked you know yeah right. we had to we had to finish the gig and this sucks and what are we gonna do well, you know yeah it was one of those things where you know I, I i don't know it's just what a band goes through for me you being know? a fan watching it it was it was funny like the first yeah. first time, For, yeah, but or yeah. two first yeah. time. Then right. I was like, "Oh, come on, yeah, man, yeah, Dave, yeah. you gotta get this together." Yeah, when you're you know? paying to get <laughs> right, into the right. place and trying to have a good time, you want to hear some good music. Well, when, we got to deliver. It I wasn't get it. disappointment yeah. at all. I didn't hear the band. It was more disappointment. I, I kind of, I was like, "Man, I, you know, he's I guess Mr. Yeah, right, yeah, and, right, and right, when yeah. you've seen us on a good night, oh, yeah. it, it gets harder to see us when we're having bad nights. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. man, we know these guys are better than this. Yeah, you know, yeah. Kind of thing. yeah, it breaks your heart a little yeah, bit, you know? So. Because And we we feel the same thing. Yeah, when, it, when, it, when it was happening, it was like, we feel the same thing. How do we cover ourselves? What if we're up here? What are we going to do? I, I can't beat my drums any harder. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know, you know? So, so speaking of recovery, so how do, <clears throat> now that this has happened... There's been some time to kind of process it. We talked before we even got on camera, some of those processes that we we go through. I mean, extremely sad to very angry. Yeah. Um, feeling guilt here and there. Yeah. Um, everybody processes it at different times and in different ways. Um, but getting to a point to what is the future now? You talk about the you know the anniversary coming up. Will there continue to be a, a black label or is it just an anniversary? I, I think it's probably going to probably until further notice, probably just stay in an anniversary kind of thing yeah. where we get back together every so often and just yeah. do a thing. I mean, or not necessarily you, on, you know, on a specific day or whatever, but just, sure. you know, uh, if we find some guys that, that wanted to sing and fill in and, and that kind of thing, that would be great. Uh, you know, but as far as the, the, the heart of black label, you know, yeah. I think we're kind of, I think it's a little done in that sense sure. and that, uh, you know, we want to keep it going, but without Dave and without Chris, because he lives in Florida, no. you know, it's just not really Black Label without no. those guys. Um, uh, and it, and it, so, I, you know, and I don't want to put any nail in a coffin or anything, because, I mean, I, I never say never. It's it's one of those things that 
Because, well, there's been times where I said, oh, I'll never play with this guy again. And then here I am playing with that guy again, you know. <laughs> so yeah. it's, so it, you never know what life's going to give you. And you just have to kind of roll with it. You know, you can't be too hung up on, oh, that asshole, blah, blah, blah. You know, no, man, just let it go. Just Never say die. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Never say die. But right now, for me, you know, without Dave, it's, no. yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, without, without Dave and his charisma yeah. and his voice. Yeah, I guess I, it's a little too early for me to be I, asking I, that I, question. No, 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 it, no, no not, it's a good not question because yeah, but, no one's asked us that. And yeah, 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 yeah we, I mean, we ox, you know, actually, I, I've never really, you know, processed that kind of question. Yeah. You know, it's like I, I never really thought about what's next for Black Label because I, I've had my stuff in my cut. You know, I've been doing work, and mm. you know, we've we've been busy Spider with our House. yeah, yeah, and all the stuff, and I, I, I haven't really, you know process that kind of thing you know and it, it, it's one of those things where you know <laughs> i actually yeah. had hoped that the the anniversary gig would have sparked dave's interest into me, starting it back me, up again. me too I, th I thought that was going to be the I catalyst if we had a good redemption show on, like that i that really he would did be feel like that okay way. guys yeah. let's fire this thing back up again because when he got out of rehab yeah. first yeah. thing he said to me is i don't want to start black label again not yet yeah. I said, oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. It wouldn't have been a good idea for him right. to do it but either. The, 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 but, the well, anniversary he, we show. We came you, back he, and we did Rivals. So. Yeah, yeah, you'd have the whole town out there, everybody supporting you. You'd have yeah. that support group and and have all that awesome response. Right. He like, would you know, feel that it, love yeah, again, it would, yeah, it would have been it would have been probably a really, really good thing for him. Yeah. You know? But again, I, I, I can't imagine, you know, my life. After losing, right. you know, you the, the, the love of my life. I, 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 trying to so keep this going. I, yeah. I, you weigh that, and it's, it, it's like, okay, I get it, but you know, it, it's one of those things where you know he lost the love of his life, but you know, so did I. You know, in terms of a, mm. of, of, of a soulmate, a, a, brother, of a vocalist yeah. and a band member, a brother and a friend, and I mean, he was the sound of the band. I always said, you know, the singer is fifty percent of the band. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. me, Craig, and Brad, we're we're like, you know, 12 and a half each or whatever it calculates out to it. The, the singer's <laughs> half the band, right. you know, without a great singer and a front guy that can that can do it. Work a crowd. Yeah, right. So when you lose that, yeah. that's hard to replace. Yeah, you know, I mean, you got to admit, you know. I'm sure in his mind, because I, I, I've had the same feeling before, I'm sure in his mind that he always knew that he would go before Susie. So that was probably never even Absolutely. in the realm we, of his we, mind. If, 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 I, would, if, if I had to bet, if I had to bet, <laughs> Dave's going first, you know? Oh, yeah. Because so, I mean, yeah, he was right. just on that downhill, right. uh, you know, roller coaster right. with the drinking. So right. we, we did think when we got that call, we thought it was going to be somebody saying about Dave, not about Susie. Yeah, so, yeah, ima right. so imagine that being Dave. I'm going to live my life, you know, how I want to, blah, blah, you know, I got my yeah. love of my life here. And then yeah. that happens and you're like, Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah devastating, De yeah, devastating. Had to be you know, it, yeah, it 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 was, and it yeah. still is. You know, and, yeah. and it, we're still, you know, healing from it. And I, I, you know, for me, I still really don't know where I am as a musician. You know, yeah. <clears throat> I get a call every now and again to play and stuff. And but you know, I'm I'm not giving a hundred percent. I'm not coming home looking like I jumped into a swimming pool. You know, yeah. playing my drums, right. I, 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 I got to get that again. I might have an outlet for you. I, I, I got to get that again. I, I, but I don't, I don't, I don't know when. And I, you know, and you know, the name Black Label. When I, when I hear it, I, I, I just see Dave. Yeah. You know, I get it. And without him. It's just it going to be like a hard. To, idea. It's yeah. going to be like hard. having Rush without Neil Peart. You know, just, absolutely yeah, right. Absolutely. Exactly. It's I mean, you not know, gonna he, happen. yeah, he made drums a voice. You know what yeah. I mean? It was like that's what I always tried to do, and that kind of thing. There without would be Dave, no. There would be people who could imitate what he did, but no one to have that spirit, no. and yeah. no one to be able to write those genius lyrics. That it's he never going to be the same. Yeah, it's just, it's just never going to be the same. You know. Yeah, but guys like you, like you said, need an outlet. And if I could give, you know, my advice doesn't mean shit, but um, you can't stop there. It may never be called Black Label again, right? But it can be called something else. And you sure. guys have the chemistry just between the three of you, yeah, right. Um, like I said, it won't it won't be Black Label. Right. You might want to call it Black Label. But we all no, know it's not no, going to be would, Black Label. It would be something. Um, for sure. 
I, I encourage we'll have to you make guys. something clever. You know, <laughs> it, it'd be clever. <laughs> I, you know, like yeah, around, I, right? yeah. I encourage you all to do that because I know it'd be healing for all you guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I promise you, this whole town would be behind you one hundred percent to. Yeah. Do whatever yeah. you know. Go see whatever you all had to. Well, regardless, so. it doesn't matter. You know, for me, I have to play. Yeah. And yes. I know Craig does too. Craig is, he's one of the best guitar players and, you know, that I've ever, ever, ever had a chance to play with. So both of us are going to continue to play yeah. with whatever happens. Yeah. And I always know I can give him a call. Craig, I, you know, I need a guy. Do you want to come in and I would do it? Yeah, in a yeah, heartbeat. You yeah. know what? That's the thing. Sure. And you still got that Gibson acoustic, right? That, yes. So yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Good. Great. And uh, <laughs> so we, you know, I we I always have that, you know that that phone call that I can make, yeah. even though Dave's not here, you know. <clears throat> but to try to try to replace him, yeah, you know, never happen. Yeah. Never happen. So not only I mean you, you play you play guitar yourself too, don't you? You have your own band. Oh, I yeah. do it that I I. I I'm a guitar player. I'd, I'd rather be known as Writing a song, songs, as a yeah. songwriter. Sure. But yeah, I'm not. No, no he's a guitar player. <laughs> I, I'm not a guitar player. Yeah, right. No, I'm, but, I, I'm but not. The, but the fact that you were able to <laughs> come from behind the kit and front your own band, playing guitar, singing—that's that's pretty a, amazing. That's, you know what I'm saying? I mean, because he's, he's a Dave Grohl over here. Yeah, I, I, exactly. Well, yeah, that's I, the I tell thing. you, behind the, kit, the same you can, age. You can so hide. You we can did hide the same. Yeah, you know. And oh, to, I do. To do that as long as you do, and then to come out exactly what you said, come as a front and writing your own songs to do that, that's that's pretty incredible. That's balls, it's scary. Baby. Look, oh, it, it's it's like standing on a on a table naked in front of <laughs> a, a, a restaurant full of people and they're sizing you up. And that, I think that's exactly the, what it feels like. Answer me this. Was the first time that you did that, was it Opening up for Black Label at MVPs? No, it was not. Okay. I did. I, I had a white I tie that on. One. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You I, were there for that. I no, was, no, no kidding. Yeah, that was a, that was okay. No, the fr it's kind. Of, this is kind of a funny story. Do we have time? No, I mean, we, we, we got as much okay. time as you want. Okay. All time. Um, I I booked my first Spider House gig. Um, I uh, I was at Humphreys and I I put it out to Brad. I said, Brad. I just got fired from Ruby Ghost as their drummer. They they wanted to bring Ed back, and it would, there was no hard feelings or anything. I really didn't want to be the you know the band at the time, and uh, I recorded some stuff with them. And uh, I said, Brad, man, I'm kind of pissed. I said, I I want to uh, I want to start my own original band. I got some songs, and uh, you know I want to put this. He said, Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it sounds great. And I called Craig Shaddix, and he said, Yeah, I'm in. And uh, I said, That's great. And uh, I didn't have a drummer at the time. And uh, <laughs> so I had those two on board. So I got me, Brad, and I got Craig Shaddix on board. And uh, I go next door that night. And Jeff was at Crossroads. They had a show going. It was, it was Snake Doctors playing. It was a pretty good night. It was mm -hmm. awesome. And so I go into the back off. I said, Jeff, man, how you doing? He, he said, oh, great. You know, and, and you know, Angela's there mingling around and doing her thing like she always does. She's, <laughs> she's always great at meeting everybody. And uh, so me and Jeff go into back off. He says, yeah, what's on your mind, man? I, I, I said, well, he says, hold on. And he, <laughs> and this isn't me, by the way. <laughs> Uh, you know, for the, for the record, but he rolls up this big fat joint, you know, <laughs> and fires it up in the office and he's, and there's like this pile of cash on, on, on the desk. He's got a count. And, uh, so he files up, the, fires up this joint. <laughs> he's like, so, so what's on your mind, man? <laughs> you know? And I, so I'm like, oh, <laughs> he's I, not a usual. Yeah. I, I, I'm not. I, well, man, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I need a favor. Yeah, I, I had, I had, I, I, I put together this original band and, you know, I want an opening slot and I, I, I saw that you had Here Come the Mummies coming in, man. And, uh, you know, we could be ready to open for Here Come the Mummies, if, you know, if, if that would be, you know, <laughs> cool with you <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah and it was one of those kind of conversations yeah. so um and he's like yeah that that sounds great he said that, that sounds like a great idea he says i they're kind of a different kind of animal you know they're you know they're a little particular they got this you know management company and stuff i said well you know let me know and uh he says well go ahead and pencil me he says i'll make it happen 
And uh, so I walk out of the office. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, and I go back over to Humphreys and, uh, and, and Angela's like, what happened? I said, well, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I said, I think I booked a show. <laughs> I said, I have an original band and we're opening for Here Come the Mummies tonight <laughs> over Crossroads in, in six weeks or something. And I, I gave her the date and stuff. That's the way that kind of started. Yeah. And so uh, that was the start of that band. And that was after Dave got his triple bypass. And I brought you guys up that yeah. night at that show mm. to play a few hours because I only had four songs, you yeah. know. Right. Oh, I wasn't nearly ready for the show, but that's how Spider House started. Yeah. You know, sweet. Well, hey guys, let's take a quick break here and we'll come yes. back and we'll get or we'll wrap it up. Yeah, right. I know it's going long here. So uh, great. I mean, we'll go all night if you want, but um, <laughs> when I say wrap it up, we could. We, 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 we could. <laughs> <laughs> we got more stories, man. Yeah, right. we could. All well, right. We can tell them when we come back. Right. Let's okay. uh, take yep. a quick break. So we're going to do a, do a black label thing, you know? And we're going to go. Uh, 2024. Here, let me get out of it. <laughs> There's me, and then you, yeah. you know. Yeah. And we can leave some room for Brad if he yeah. gets in here. Oh. God, I, 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 I got like 10 of these that I really wanted to get Dave, Dave's signature on. I wasn't able to do that. I, I really hate that. That's cool. Yep. Great. Good times. So that's pretty cool. Cool? Tim was gracious enough to donate this relic from the Jello room. Yes, it is. That's an old. That's an oldie goldie, man. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. There you go. Thank you so much for that. That's awesome. Yes, please. Uh, Hang it. Sweet. Yeah, wherever. Put it behind the or toilet. Yeah. Behind, behind the, the toilet gym. or something. You know, <laughs> store it back there. Whatever you want to do. You know. There you go. So as you can tell, we're back, getting our stuff back together. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, that, that that's really cool. <clears throat> so that you might they might not have heard you on the mic. I had the mic over there, but yeah. So where where did this symbol come from? Well, it was uh the story from that was I I've been carrying it around for a long time and couldn't use it, but that I broke that symbol uh the night we played the Jello Room on a Saturday night. Now, the Jello Room, for those of you do, who don't know what it was, it was at the end of Oakwood where it butts into Jordan Lane, and it was underneath a building, and it had a really low ceiling. But they specialized in Jello shots, and that's what they did. It was the Jello Room, right? Great, great stage, great place to play. Well, I don't think there was a stage, though. It was We always played it, on the it floor. Was, well, whatever. The <laughs> great band area. Right, yes. Area, right, yeah. And whenever we went in there, we'd pack it out. And the night that we played, that I played this cymbal, it, uh, we, they they sold out of Jell-O. <laughs> <laughs> at so, the Jell-O room. Yeah, right, at the Jell-O room. So that this this Sabian is, is one, of those, one of those symbols that... <clears throat> Uh, you know, I always remember I hung on to for a long time and I wanted to save it for a special occasion or give it to a bar or uh, just to remember those times uh, that Black Label played together and did some great, you know, just, well, just rocked. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, that, that nights at the Jello room were just crazy man i mean it, it was yeah we've, it, we've it, probably destroyed more gear i mean you had to walk sideways and right. it, it yeah. was unbelievable I, I i and i was so happy to be part of the band you know yeah. at that point i was like god this is so great this is exactly what i need after working all week long it's just beating the shit out of something with a oh, stick. Man, that's, that's extremely special and i really appreciate cool. you bringing it that's yeah that, that's awesome yeah that's a that's a good one and uh have you ever yeah. had a have you ever broken someone and actually sound better Yes. I yeah, to. I, I I, yeah, I, I've actually, I played a couple of broken ones recorded uh, because they sounded, they had a really fast decay and they mm -hmm. had this really cool effect. Yeah. And I've done, I, I experiment with all kinds of crap yeah, like that. that, you know. <laughs> I, I played uh, 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 mics in trash cans in front of my kick drum. And I, 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 I do all kinds of shit, metal mm -hmm. trash cans. And, you know, I, I try to, you know, discover different sounds and stuff like Stanton that. Stanton Moret. Yeah, that's right, dude. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a weird. I'm, I'm just a weirdo. You know, I, I, I am. I I get off on on recording and songwriting and and discovering new things like that. That's 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 where my passion is. Yeah. And it always has been. Now this you know. is one weird thing because my my first drummer Paul <laughs> uh, used to to never he never shined his hi hats. 
you know, they eat green and shit. Mm -hmm. And he could, he swore by it. He's like, man, anytime I've ever cleaned those things, they always sound like crap. <laughs> right. So I let them get as dirty as they can and I never touch them. And they the sound The weight of great. the grease. Right, it's right, something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but right. I, he never, he, he shine his, he'd shine his, you know, uh, crashes <laughs> in, in his ride, but he would never shine those high hats. There's a lot of blood, a lot of hand grease and fingerprints and, uh, yeah, don't send that to the FBI You're or right, anything. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a you file know, on yeah, you. Yeah, right. Yeah, just keep it here. That that would be good. You know, <laughs> at the very beginning of the podcast, you said that the, the first drummer pay, played real timid, and you turn around and you said, man, hit them things. Remember you said yeah, that? Yeah, Tony. yeah, Tony. Which, which brought back, when I played with you guys, that one time, we were play, playing that song, and, uh, and I was, you know, I was, I'll, be, I'll admit it, I was extremely intimidated and I, and I was very, very nervous. And I was like, man, I'm going to mess this up. These guys are going to look at me like I'm an idiot. And I was playing. I was on I was on beat, and I was playing everything fine. Well, you you turned over and looked at me. He was like, beat them things. Yeah, he oh, screamed God. at me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, I no, guess when you're, when you're used to this volume oh, yeah. level, yeah. you know, you kind of like, yeah, where's oh, the drums? Where's the, the PA drums? is set for You, you didn't that. say it yeah, mean. You, right, you yeah. said it exciting oh. to get me going. Oh, okay, good. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. I, I was just, I was, I, I couldn't imagine if I would ever like invite a guest up on stage and be like, you suck. Yeah, oh, right, no, 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 yeah. no. It wasn't I, like that. I would never do that. Never no, do that. it wasn't like that at all. You weren't screaming at me. You were like motivating me. <laughs> okay, so, good, yeah, good. As long yeah. as it was positive. That's great. <laughs> hey, man, come on. Let's go. Yeah, it was pretty good. You know, because, yes, I get it. Even we, even when we go to sit in with bands, there's always that nervous because you're, like he said, playing in somebody else's backyard. You're using their gear. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. You know, they might have 13-gauge strings and you're used to nines and it's like, oh, my God, I can barely bend these things. But, you know, you you treat their gear with respect. You know, you yeah. get up there, but you're, you're nervous because this isn't your usual gig, no. you know, unless <clears> you've gotten up and, and sat in with certain people like Mike Roberts. You know, there we got to a point where we'd go sit in with 5 O'Clock Charlie all the time you know, just, just after every Thursday practice kind of thing, just go in there and, yeah. and, you know, getting us up on stage and playing and it got so comfortable, you know, but yeah, first time for a brand new sit in and, it, oh my God, oh shit, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's gotta be nervous. Well, you've had a couple, you've had a guy sit in for you before, right? We, we've talked about that at the beginning. Didn't you have Rob? Rob yeah, Buck? right. Yeah. Rob Buck. I, I had a, I had a situation <laughs> where I, uh. I broke my Achilles tendon. Well, tell them about the first one. Didn't you like drive a nail through your finger or some shit? Oh, I mm. did do that too. Yes, I did. I, I we were was playing at, at the at the at station. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't as big a gig, but that was kind of sudden. But yeah, I did. I drove a, uh, I, yeah. See, I drove a nail through my index finger oh, right dude. here. A finished nail right through the middle of it. And I had to get it sewn up and had this thing on it. And, you know, naturally it's my, my snare finger and the doc's like, you know, you're, you're not playing drums. <laughs> the gig is off for you this week. Tomorrow. Right? Yeah. 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 It's not happening for you. I'm, I'm going, oh man, but I, I, I could do this doc. If I just <laughs> to wrap it real yeah, tight, I, just I, I, time I, to stick I, to this finger this and I'll figure it out. He's yeah. like, Tim, you're not, you're not doing this. Okay. <laughs> he says, you know, you're going to really fuck up your first knuckle. If you, you know, oh. I said, all right. So I give Rob Buck a call, who's a great friend and a great drummer, and I love him to death. He is he is uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful human being, him and his wife, Brandy. Yep. And uh, he covered the gig for me and and filled in. And, uh, yeah, and then... You know, Rob's got a very intimidating presence about him. Oh, When yeah. you first meet him. Oh, he's a big... But then as soon as you talk to him, you're like, dude. man, this is one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah, super he'll, good guy. Yeah, he'll... he'll Shoot you. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. I mean, he's got camos. and I mean, he'll, you won't even know who shot you, if you yeah. know, from Rob. But Rob, Rob's that kind of guy. And a very smart, uh, brilliant uh, mechanic. And, um, yeah, good friend. He, he, he became a good friend over the years. And um, so he filled in for me on that gig. And then uh, years and years later, uh, really not too long ago, five, yeah, five, five years, years ago or yeah. so, I, I don't we know. Had, I, we had to go as Ghost. Yeah. You know, the band Ghost for yeah, our right. Halloween gig. Yeah, it was a <laughs> Halloween gig. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they had, but you got, you were opening for Saliva. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you go, did you go and watch? No. Okay. No, uh, that, I, I, I think that'd be kind of hard. No, I, I, I couldn't. I, yeah. Yeah. I, his I, foot, they, they he wouldn't, was, it, he was, it was a, Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I broke my, my Achilles tendon on my right foot, which uh, is my main uh, kick drum yeah. foot. And I, I couldn't put any weight on it, yeah. you know, and the doctor was like, you know, you're not, you're got, you're, you're going to be in bed for yeah, put your leg up and four and a half weeks. Yeah. 
then mm-hmm. you're going to be in a cast for six weeks. Yeah. And then you're going to be <laughs> out of a cast for another four weeks. And then maybe I can let you drive. Mm-hmm. So I, I, it's a, you know, three month, four yeah. month kind of thing. So I said, guys, I'm not, you know, I, I can't, I can't play this with my left foot. There's just no way I'm going to be able to do it, you know. And uh, so Rob covered the saliva show too for me on that. And that, that was so cool. And I'm, I'm so glad he was able to do it, you know. Um, and it broke, just broke my heart because I was really looking forward to that because we could have, we could have killed that one, you know, you <laughs> right, know what I mean? Yeah. Comfortably with you guys. If it, right. it, if it was the band and it just, it really did break my heart. I'm going, you I mean, know, I realize my age and what happens, it, you stay healthy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's one of those things you know, it, it, that really settled in with me uh, on that when I couldn't pull through sure. for these guys, you know, that, that was the biggest thing for me. That that's what but you can't help that. I mean, that was a freak. I, thing, and you guys you understood know. that, but it was still hard. That was a hard pill oh, yeah. for me to swallow. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I would have done anything. I mean, I, I, I played gigs where I'm throwing up outside. You I know? saw that one up at Shag Nasty. Yeah. yeah I, I, I just puking. I, I, yeah. You know, it's like, I, I, I will never can't, I, I want to, I want to keep my word and be a reliable guy. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that, that, oh, that's my biggest thing. If I ever miss a gig, it's, it's gotta be, it's a, my legs gotta be cut Catastrophic off. reason. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, it, it's one of those things, but it happens, you know, yeah, and, sure. and it's just a local thing, but you know, it was a big gig for the guys, you know, to open them for saliva and shags and it was packed and, you know, I think it was sold out on that one actually. Yeah. And it was, it was one of those things where I, I just couldn't do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And it broke my heart, but yeah, that that was the Achilles tendon story. Mm-hmm. So it's better now, and I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm back in the game. Sweet, you know, for a couple of years now. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I I asked you this question. And I hope you had some time to think about it. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you've that you guys want to bring up, or some some story that I would have never been able to even think to ask? <laughs> that you're like, oh, I gotta tell this. For me, right now, it, it's going to be. Uh, I, I want to, I need to give a shout out to my wife, Angela, um, who I've been together with for so long and who supported me through all of ups the downs. ups and downs. Yeah. And, you know, she's so special and, and, and a great person and the other wives as well. Yes. You know, Leslie. And that was another great thing. Yeah, is, yeah. Leslie, Le- Leslie mm-hmm. is, you know, Susie, of course, we don't have her anymore and she was... She was the accountant, you know, and, and she looked out for our ass. Yeah, she's and, kind of the heart and soul. Right, exactly. Right. And yeah. she's gone. And then, of course, Candy, Brad's wife, who has been with him. And, and she's a, a fantastic, talented musician and teacher, uh, music teacher. And, uh, you know, I wanted to just say hello and thank you for all the support, uh, f- you know, from all the wives through yes. the years, for mm-hmm. sure. You know that we never, I, I never, re- we never really talked about, and that that that's important. Uh, well, you can see by just going to shows yeah. and watching those guys that yeah, they actually ran everything. You all just oh yeah, played the music absolutely, right? absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and they, they were, they, and yeah. that that was the coolest thing is you know they yeah. they understood yeah. you right. know about yeah. this thing and and it, and it was family. We we all got when we'd get together and have the dinner parties at Tim's or yeah. or the the birthday party stuff at Tim's and yeah, and, you know we all the wives were there. You know yeah. it was just. At they Tim's, did. at Tim's, <laughs> at Tim's. Oh yeah, at and, Tim's, and, and, and <laughs> right. I mean, but we basically, I mean, d- during a lot of this, uh, well, you, you know, yours was a center hub because you know, it was. They, 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 really the that, 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 they will come. Right? That right. studio is great, <laughs> well, man. I we'd have it. a practice yeah. night, and the the wives yeah. would all convene, and they'd be yeah. downstairs chatting, yeah. and we'd be upstairs making noise. You know, yeah, it was it was great. Those were good times. Those nights. Was you able to get? I know you you moved. Did you? Get your studio back up to where you want it, or is it's uh, it, I got it through variance and permitting, and the permits paid for. Mm. So no, mm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> always I, a work in I, progress. Yeah, yeah, I haven't bro- broke ground yet. I we're it's expanding as we speak, gotcha. but it's, it's not. Yeah. It's going to be something that's going to happen though. It's going to be beautiful and big, and the music will continue and prevail for mm. sure at my house. Sure. You know, it'd be awesome. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep. Anything you want to bring up? All good? Yeah, I think we're good. I mean, we've okay. covered a lot. You know, yeah, so. yeah, we have. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody that's watching this is very glad that you guys come. I mean, it's hard to get for you guys to tell your story to each individual people yeah. that you know. Um, and I'm sure there's many people has, you know, wonder what's on your minds and your right. thoughts about stuff. Yeah. So uh, 
you know, I'll, I'll thank you for them also for, for yes. coming on and sharing your stories. Well, I'm sure that Dave's here with us and yeah. listening in too. He's you know? sat just about where you're sitting right I, now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, here, and so. I'm sure he's here with us. Yep. You know, so. I mean, he's, he'll never be gone. Yeah, right. right. Not for as me. As long as we have our memories and I, I carry him in our hearts, you know, he's, yep. he's always there. Yep. yep. We're going to end it right here and uh, there might be some B-roll afterwards. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see ya. All right. See you guys. Hey, that's rock and roll right that's there. Right, man. That's definitely rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've been to many of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.